What is up, ACL Nation? How are you guys doing? Welcome here to Des Moines, Iowa. It is day number two for open number two. Going to start things off with a pretty heavy Michigan squad. We got Maya Cup and Donald Cup making their way here. We got Jaden Ellis throwing with Carson Getty here. So three out of four players from Michigan, Carson Getty and Jaden Ellis, both canine sponsored players this month. So this should be a fun one. Very excited to get this one underway. Hope you guys are ready for a fun day. I believe I've done everything in my power to make sure that we're not going to have any more issues as far as the connectivity goes. So it's all going to be roses, sunshine, and rainbows here today, guys. I'm excited. Hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already. They're going down and back a couple more times. Two brackets, 64 teams in each bracket. Nothing but good times to be had by all starting things off here with these two teams. And then on deck, we got ourselves another pretty good one. Ian Cripps and Jeremy Frazier take on Brett Guy and Matt Guy. The way the brackets are lined up, guys, I think we should have banger after banger after banger. It's going to be a fun time. Johnny Torres, what up, man? Welcome in. Welcome in. Got a chance to see Donald Cup in the seniors division. Had a nice deep run over there. Ultimately, it was Steve Schrader take that one down. Maya Cup had the queen seat, but she was double dipped by Deb Odom. So let's see how they do here in tier one. Doubles action underway. Jaden steps in front of the board for the spin. Looks like Jaden is going to win the toss. Both teams throwing Viper R's. And with that being said, Chad, here we go. These bags are live. Jay Rubin, J Raymond Hush, Justin Duke, what up? Welcome in. Heather, how you doing? Again, shout out to Raymond Hush. Appreciate the jersey from Bust You Up Cornhole, man. It was awesome. Feels very comfortable, too, by the way. Got a chance to wear it at uh, the blind draw th last week. Nice push right into the pile there, kind of keeping center lane control. Maya cleans it up heading into the final bags. Jaden, no help on that one. Can Maya collect it? Falls as she's shooting. Does not distract her, though. Jaden is going to strike first here with a couple points, and we are underway 2-0. Team K-9. Well, I guess we got Team K-9 versus Team Great Shots. That's what we're going to call it. Carson's first bag is off to the left a little bit, but in the red zone should be able to collect that one. Uh, yeah, Nathan, two Tier 1 brackets today. If you're in the area and you get eliminated from the tournament, we'll have sit-and-goes running all day or if you just want to kind of pop in. Feel free to sign up for a sit and go. Carson's going to finish his final shot down the middle and in. And Donald here with bag number four just has some damage control to do. Really nothing fancy needed. Unless he wants to be amazing and collect that level six blocker. That would have been a cool way to start the live feeds, but wisely goes in to give up six. Uh, I don't think the boards are sticky. I think they're just looking... Slower than yesterday. Yesterday they were playing pretty fast. It's always interesting when I see players like Jaden throw. You know, he's got one foot. He starts on the mat. His second foot is starting behind the mat. I'm always kind of like, man, if you, if you catch that mat in the wrong direction, could throw everything off, fall forward, you know, bust your face on the ground. Nobody wants that. Good job, staying sticky side, cutting around. My up top at the airmail, nicely done. I know that Carson and Jaden probably came in with a game plan. What a collect. They probably came in with a game plan to attack Maya um, via the block. But she was able to get over that one nicely done. Let's take a look at that again. Jaden Ellis, strong push through to get that collect. Nicely done, picking up some points there. It's going to make it 15 to nothing start here for Jaden and Carson. 
Who's my favorite to win it all? Um, I, I mean, it's chalk, man, but I kind of called it before they finished rounders. I was going to go with Gavin Cano and Fisher Hamilton. They ended up finishing as the number one seed coming out of rounders, so I'm going to stay there, man. I mean, I do like what I'm seeing out of Carson and Jaden. I believe they come out as the two seed. So that'd be kind of a fun final. You got Logan and Justin Chamberlain Jr. as well, but if I got to pick a winner, I'm going Fisher and Gavin today. Good job there. Slick side push right through the pile. Let's see if Donald can do that same thing as last shot. Slick side down, maybe even collect this bag. Too far to the right, wrong bag. Helping out Carson, it goes in. Maya with an eye roll. Not sure if that was more situational or if it was just because the score is showing 17 nothing. To get into this a match here, um, it was pretty a, a pretty good, I guess, upset in what I thought was going to happen. Adrian Brunson and Ty Morris, Donald Cup and Maya Cup, 24 to 10 over those two. So good victory for them there, but kind of hitting a wall now. We got Carson Getty and Jaden Ellis. If they win this one, they're going to take on either Charlie Van Arstall and Kiara Peterson or David Morris and Damon Reynolds, and that's kind of interesting because I believe they played each other in rounders, and Kiara and Jaden. Give me an interesting ride home, depending on how that plays itself out. Nicely done by Maya sneaking in there. We got some awkward knuckles on the side. Carson's bag, I'm sorry, Jaden's bag is going to be held up. So the cups are now on the board and underway. 17-2, to two, Donald will have first throw. Donald, though, and Maya, I believe they're both throwing slick side down, so it's really hard for them to generate some points by throwing slick side down. You can't really generate blockers and force difficult situations. So this blocker here is more for looks. It's really not that effective being on the slick side. Easy to get kind of bullied out. Not really going to slow anyone down. That Viper material. Slick side push right into the pile, and now we've got it kind of muddied on purpose. He wanted that to push the pile a little bit more. Jaden saying it's a tough push. If you want to, I would roll. Carson agrees. It stays on the board, though. That's not terrible. Donald's the one who's got some work to do here. Carson's got a lane if Donald's bags do fall for the push, so... I expect this round to wash itself out either way. Donald is going to go up top for the airmail. Big hit lands right on top of the pile. Gets everything to fall. Nicely done. The old three-bag airmail collect. Three for one. Nicely done by Donald Cup. We're going to head back down to the right-hand side. Maya with first toss. The score is 17-2 to two in round number seven. Again, next up here on the broadcast court, we're going to get Matt Guy and Brett Guy to take on Ian Cripps and Jeremy Frazier. Off the back of the board there. He tried cutting around it and leaving that blocker in place. And now we got a chance here for an airmail drag for the win. Carson wants to take a look at it, but I think Jaden already has an idea of what he wants to do in there on bag number three. Probably going to shoot this here on bag number four for the win. Line drive gets the hit. And that will do it. Nice collect. Great strategic approach there from Jaden. He knew exactly when he was going to shoot that airmail, what he wanted to do to make a hit. Let's take a look at it one more time before we head to our first commercial break of the evening. Jaden Ellis and Carson Getty get us started with a quick dub. Chat, we're still live. We haven't lost connection one time, so we're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, all cornhole versus fire right after this.
All right, Chad, welcome back in here to Des Moines, Iowa. We're at open number two, brought to you by Rise Fuel Energy Drinks. Designed to rise above. We're having a good time. One match underway. We're going to bring on Brett Guy and Matt Guy to take on Ian Cripps and Jeremy Frazier. Got an all-cornhole sponsored team against a fire cornhole sponsored team. This should be fun no matter what we're looking at. Uh, I got some of you guys saying it's not live on ACL TV. Let me see what I can do, guys. I'll, I'll try and get that fixed. It should be live. I know we're programmed to go live at 4 o'clock, so maybe it's going to go live at 4 o'clock Eastern time. If it's not live before that time zone, it's because I went early and I'm giving you guys extra content. So whenever we go early and give you guys extra content, it's only on uh, Facebook and YouTube, stuff like that. So check back in with me in about 16 minutes. If it doesn't go live on ACL TV, I'll have to make a phone call to make some things happen. Such a strong glare on that screen. I can't tell. Can't tell if they're live. I don't think they are just yet. It looks like they're still kind of going down and back and feeling each other out. bags to see what they're throwing. I think it said all slide 2.0s maybe. And it looks like they have punched each other and now they have spun. So here we go chat. These bags are live. We are ready to get things underway. Starting things off on the right hand side. Brett and Ian. Here we go. Perfect roll. Gets over it nicely done. Good hit there from Brett. Good shot here from Brett. Look at this roll. Hits just the right spot. Gets just the right amount of speed on it. Hits the pile. Fills the gap perfectly. Nicely done. Good shot. Brett Guy and Matt Guy start things off in the right direction. They are underway. Five. Nothing. Jeremy's going to come out firing a blocker here on his first bag as Matt Guy's already got one in the hole. Matt Guy comes with a back block right behind it. I expect a back block here from Frazier and let the airmail show begin. Well, that first shot fired from Matt Guy is going to carry him off the back. Landed a little bit short. Jeremy Frazier's looked low out of his hand, but he is able to get his to fall. Takes Matt with him. He's up one on the round. Second airmail attempt here from Matt Guy is also short. Just right on the front of the red zone. Frazier with a collect opportunity here for six. He's going to get it. Big hit. Jeremy Frazier at the right time. Able to get the six points. Big push. Excited hit that one to go. First shot here from um, Ian is off to the left. Brett off to the right. Bit of a maze here to get through to go to the hole. He's going to bit a hard angle and a good roll attempt there from Ian Cripps. Good landing spot from Brett. See if Ian can do it again. Hard tilt. 
fills the gap. Airmail now from Brett. Land short. Kangaroos off the back. Plus one for Ian. You experts are on here, and I'm looking to know the new stepping rule. I got you, bro. I got you. I can tell you everything you need to know about the stepping rule. 7-5 to five start here to this match, though. So as we take a look at Jeremy stepping over the line right there, his right foot stays planted. Left foot crosses the line, but right foot never moves as there's a toe down, so that is a legal throw. That show is good to go, or that throw is good to go. Stays planted on that one, goes off the back of the board. Looks like Matt Guy going with a new color scheme of shoes this year. Going away from the red and the orange to the blue. It's been difficult to see if Matt can sneak around for this. I'm going to see if he maybe just wants to drive through it, collect his points when he can. Oh, too deep. I believe Matt and Brett are still going to escape with one point that round. Looks to be the case. Seven to six. here for Ian to hit. Good job going slick side. Went slick side there to make sure that he lifted up the corner of Brett's bag to get underneath it. Here's a look at the venue that we're looking at today in Des Moines, Iowa. Having ourselves a pretty good time out here. Back to the action. Score is 7-6. Matt Guy's first shot is off to the right. Still should be able to collect that one. Already steps all the way out on the mat. Matt or, I'm sorry, Jeremy does a good job of taking away center lane, but doesn't really stop him, just kind of prolongs the attempt. Jet Jet, what up, my dude? Says, lose the black curtain. Ah, oh, man, I'm trying, bro. I'm trying. I like, I, I'm with you. I like seeing people in the background trying to, uh, you know, get their facial expressions when a big shot is hit, stuff like that. A lot of these people, the people that make the decisions, they want the clean look, man. They know more than I do, so we keep it clean for them. But I, I do, man. I, I, I look back at the team's event whenever Selmeyer, I can't remember which one it was, Brandon, I think it was, hit that game-winning or game-saving airmail, man, in the team's event, and the reaction in the background is just epic. You'll never see something like that again. You know, I look at Jalen Jones, a lot of the people in the background, they're just having a great time. And I, I like getting those facial expressions. And Ian looked like he knew that release was a little bit off. I was talking to Jeremy Frazier um, a second ago, and he was saying that he's having fun throwing with Ian. Ian's throwing very, very well. He says it's just, you know, as, as good as Ian is throwing, it's just so remarkably impressive how good Cheyenne is. He says having her throw the bags at basically my direction as I watch him going to home, man, everything she can do is just amazing. Her airmail was on point at open number one. I'll be coming out with my rankings or my predictions, if you will, for next season. We'll see how good I did on last season. Just going to do a little fun show and go from there, man. But I think 2023-24 season is going to be better than last year, and that's hard to say because last year was just amazing. Wally, do you know of any doubles or singles players thrown with different weighted bags? Uh, I do not, man. I honestly don't even know how I'd be able to tell that without asking people. Um, to my understanding, they all have to look the same and stuff anyway. Matt with a right distance angle, but too far to the left. He's definitely not happy with it. Frazier taps in the wrong bag. I'm, I think he was trying to go for a cut there. I, I just like going board there, take my one point, go back down to this side. Ooh. 
Whoopsie! Brett and Matt both disgusted with that back in front of the board. And it's a yard sale. Bags all over the place right now. Nobody wants to put one in. Board showing three on one. Ian tries to go with the blocker, but even that one's a little bit too far to the side. So we're tied up now, 7-7. Seven, seven. Needle not really moving that much. Where it looks like nine rounds in, is that right? Let me get to this here. Ten rounds in now. Update on the winner's side of the brackets. Fisher Hamilton, Gavin Cano in the number one seed. They advance on the winner's side. They're going to take on Hunter Thorne and Zach Scheibner. Zach Harris and Zeb Smith to take on Justin Burton Jr. and Logan Chamberlain. On the right-hand side, Ryan Smith and Ryan Wiedenfeld will take on the winner of this one. Up top, we got Spencer Fabianar and Tony Forbes to take on Tucker Gregory and Chase Frieden, or Jordan Brown and Steve Gray. Carson Getty and Jaden Ellis, we saw them earlier, will now take on David Morse and Damon Reynolds. P.J. Knott and Anthony Mayball, their run continues. They're going to take on either Justin Lang and Landon Crabtree or Sebastian Schaefer-Ford, Nick Mescal. Cedra Herreras and Jalen Jones down 8-4 to four to Jordan Power and Joe Neese dead. Winner of that one gets Windsor and Creek Killer. And then at the top part of that bracket, Kyle Hutley and Dawson Cummings, two elite division players, are going to take on Brandon Earls and Tim Bohatton. Brandon and Tim with the upset over Alec Ryan and Ethan Walker, 21-13. Good round there for Ian. He wants a 12. He's still going to walk away with four points. Matt and Brett just kind of on the struggle bus right now. Neither player really finding their groove. Twelve seven. Frazier Cripps in the lead. I think myself and a lot of other players are expecting big things out of Jimmy Frazier this year. Matt Guy is going to call a timeout. Jimmy Frazier ecstatic about that. <laughs> Brett getting an earful from Matt right now. Matt not happy at all with the way this game is getting played out. Taking a look at the PPRs, we got Ian throwing a 7.67. Brett Guy with a 7-5, Jeremy Frazier an 8-4, Matt Guy with a 7-6. So nobody exactly shining out of this one. But the way it's shaping up right now, Jeremy and Ian are in the lead. That one hanging on the edge. <laughs> And it's not going to fall, so Jeremy's going to get out of it with two more. Logan Chamberlain <laughs> off to the side. They're kind of egging Jeremy Frazier on. You know Logan's having a field day right now. 14-7. I think this all kind of started in rounders. I believe it was Gavin Cano and Fisher Hamilton were playing Matt and Brett Guy. And something didn't go well. I only caught the back end of it. But Matt walked away from that match. I believe it was those two. They're pretty extremely upset about it. And then uh, it looks like it's kind of spilling over here into bracket play. I thought they kind of righted the ship there for a second as Brett, Brett Guy and Matt Guy coming into this match have only given up two points. How's it going, Wally? What up, Bo? We're back. We are back, man. We are back. And it uh, looks like Ian and Jeremy off to a 16-7 head start Whoa. here. See, Justin Burton Jr. and Logan Chamberlain have made their way over to the court. So, What's that things... score in that uh, Jalen Cedro match? Other um, bracket. Let's see here. Other In the other bracket. In A bracket? In B bracket? Yeah. Bottom right. 
14-8. Jordan Power and Joe Neistat. Check the in PPRs because I think Jalen and Joe threw 24 in a row apiece. That's one point. I'll take a gander at it. Uh, but yeah, Zach Smith, I'm sorry, Zach Harris and Zeb Smith are going to take on Logan and Justin next. All right, you want to see some PPRs in that match? Looks like uh, Jordan Power is throwing 11 through eight rounds. Jalen Jones throwing a 10 6 3. So pretty high PPRs over there. Getting back into this match, though, it's 16 to 9. Cripps and Frazier. I guess this would be an upset for them, you know what I mean? Not normal partners. I'm glad to see Ian, you know, finally getting a chance to throw with, like, in my opinion, a top tier player. I think he's doing pretty well. I like the pairing here with Jeremy Frazier and Ian Cripps. I saw that Brandy made a post with him looking for a partner, and I, I was ecstatic whenever I thought that this pairing could happen. Good roll there from Brett. Has to do something to get back into this game. As Brett's already got one off the back of the board. They find themselves down by seven. Jeremy Frazier uh, wanting a timeout here. He wants to kind of talk this one through. Frazier wants a slick side push. Ian obliges, but basically knocks in Brett, and that's a perfect blocker from Brett. I wouldn't mind a hard push here to try and knock in two. Airmail time instead. Big hit there from Ian Cripps, able to grab it. Eight on seven. Ian's going to get out of that with one point. Nicely done. Let's see how well my replay skills are here. Matt wasn't upset enough. Now Brett, Brett taking an extra second to enter the score. Just kind of adding fuel to the fire. There we go. Now we got it. I don't know if it's going to be a big air mail or something, but Matt needs to get into this game mentally. Right now he just seems frustrated. Good block from Frazier. This could be the air mail round we're talking about. Frazier fires first back blocker. Matt immediately air mail off the back. Frazier wanted to leave it there. Got a Come little on, bit too Jeremy. greedy. Got to take your three points in this situation. Come on, Jeremy. Got to push through this. Be smart. There we go. Stay sticky side. It's good enough. He wanted to replace. He was in, he was indecisive right there. You can tell he wanted to shoot the airmail again. He knew it was missed. He missed it. Wow. When's the last time you see Matt Guy miss three airmails off the back of the board? Push for the win. Yeah, he's stepping out because he kind of wants to leave that front one there. Don't matter. He gets them game. all nicely done. Jeremy Frazier, Ian Cripps able to finish it off. Matt Guy's airmail off a little bit. The hat toss does not happen. Keeps the hat on his.
All right, ACL Nation, welcome back in. Hope you guys have enjoyed the content so far. We're going to keep things right along here. We're going to Texas. Justin Burton Jr. and Logan Chamberlain are going to take on Zach Harris and Zeb Smith. We're going to go down and back a couple times, give you guys a little bit of opportunity here to download the ACL Fan Zone app if you haven't already. Make sure you download that app. It is going to be a easy way for you guys to see where everyone is and how much fun we're having along the way. Check your PPRs, follow your favorite players. Pretty self-explanatory. You can follow me whenever I play and watch me win all my competitive bracket championships since, I, since I'm pretty much really good in that division. I'm the best there is. Although I can't win singles. Updating the brackets, Ryan Windsor and Matthew Creekkiller will take on Jordan Power and Joe Neese dead. Kyle Hutley and Dawson Cummings will take on Brandon Earls and Tim Bohatton. Brackets are kind of starting to wind down a little bit. Carson Getty and Jaden Ellis will take on David Morris and Damon Reynolds. Then at the bottom, P.J. Knott and Anthony Mayball waiting for their opponent. Right now it looks like that's going to be Justin Crabtree. I'm sorry, Justin Lang and Landon Crabtree. The score there is 20-4 over Sebastian Schaefer Ford and Nick Mescal. In the A bracket, Spencer Fabianar and Tony Forbes will take on Tucker Gregory and Chase Frieden. The bottom part of that bracket, Ryan Smith and Ryan Wiedenfeld will take on Ian Cripps and Jeremy Frazier. Got this match here. The winner of this one will take on either Hunter Thorne and Zach Shibner or Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano. Kind of play things out and see where we stand and how many of these matches we can get on the live feeds. But for the most part, we'll bring you guys as much content as possible. Josh Keck. Chad Smith, Sean Haley running the brackets for us this weekend. And we are underway. 4-0 start for Justin Burton, Jr. Giving Logan Chamberlain first toss. These guys play against each other all the time. So should be pretty familiar with each other. It's really my first chance to get a look at Zach Harris. I believe he qualified through the, the gauntlet, right? So this is his first uh, pro action, at least in front of my eyes. He is throwing the Gavin Cano BG Wizards, it looks like. And we talked to Logan Chamberlain yesterday during our BG player spotlight about these BG Wizards. Threw them with Chad Ochocinco in Canton, Ohio, and pretty much been throwing them ever since. And pretty much winning ever since as well as they took down open number one. Six-nothing start. Chat, let me know, though, who are you guys wanting to see this weekend? Who is it that you guys have on your radar that we'd love to get on the live feeds? Trevor Main checking in says Justin and Logan have this one. Bishop wants to see Tony Forbes and Spencer. Good collect from JBJ. Man, eight on 12 in that round. JBJ going to add on to it. Four rounds in. Score is already 10 to nothing. Shereen Jordan checking in in the JBJ and Logan corner as well. JBJ with a nice blocker right there. Good roll from Zach. Kind of breaking it out right there at the right time. See if Logan can push through this pile and keep the advantage. Slick side down, misses too far to the left on the board here. Not fancy, but it is two points. Ooh, a little bit deeper than I thought. It. Either way, they are underway. Let's go ahead and get some Texas inside information. What up, my man? What's going on, guys? All right. So go ahead and let the people know who you are, what club you're from, and how awesome you are for helping me out last week. <laughs> so I am Isaiah Reyes yeah, from boy. Amarillo, Texas, part of RKC, and also 
known as West Texas Outlaw Cornhole. There you go. So you guys got a chance to see his logo last week on the K9 Live feeds. And hopefully get to see them on the ACL Live feed some some point this year. If you guys or your company is looking to sponsor Live feeds or any segment, we're going to kind of branch out and do a lot more this year. So lead changes, replays, all types of fun stuff. Feel free to reach out to me. We'll try and get you guys on the live feeds and have some fun growing your brand in the process. But uh, you got some little inside information with these Texas boys here, huh? First time I get to see Zach, but you know them very well. Yeah, Zach, Zach did really well last year in the pro qual. Uh, that last match he had won 17-21, I believe it was. But uh, he has an awesome roll bag. So does Zeb. Zeb is another top player out of Texas, uh, an advanced player. Yeah, I think I made a statement last year and kind of got the chat upset with me about how strong Texas has become over the last year or two. I put them as the top state in the country. A lot of people still think Florida's hanging on for dear life, but I, I don't know, man. I think Texas has surpassed it. I'm going to get a chance to hopefully go down there and just kind of hang out. But right now, L Logan and JBJ, I was about to call them LBJ, but Logan and Justin Burton Jr. just in command of this one. Yeah, Justin and Logan have been on fire today the rounders and these last couple of games logan's just Big been hit. phenomenal with his roles yeah airmail drag right there to save some points but only plus two daniel says what you know about them texas boys man there's a lot of them i know that much now the texas females though i still will go with the florida females over the texas females matter of fact i don't know if any state is going to catch up with the florida females anytime soon but are there any strong females in texas that we should kind of keep our eye on um, and go into the season. Coming up, hopefully we can get uh, Celeste all day out here and uh, a couple of um, Midland and Odessa females out there. They got some strong females out there that are really good at throwing. The guys out there have to become mentors, teach them a little bit, and help them out if they need help. And expand the division as much as possible. I think we're all headed in the right direction. Eric Verdusco, my guy. What is up, brother? Hope you're doing well. Right, score is going to be 14 to 2. Round number 8. Again, we're going to kind of play it by ear chat to see how many of these matches we can get here. We're going to send Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano to court number 9 against Hunter Thorne and Zach Scheibner. They're going to play. The winner of that one will play the winner of this one here. Carson Getty and Jaden Ellis heading to court 33 to take on David Morris and Damon Reynolds. Brandon Earls and Tim Bohatton to take on Kyle Hutley and Dawson Cummings over on court 35. And it looks like we got a couple matches paused, so hopefully we should be able to get Spencer Fabianar and Tony Forbes next against Tucker Gregory and Trace Frieden. And then if there's enough time after that, Joe Kay and Jordan Power against Windsor and Creek Killer. Definitely looking to watch uh, Spencer throw over here. Yeah, Spencer's a strong, talented player. I believe he'll be in the Pro Division next year. Staring across our little court here, and I see Austin Waskow, another strong player out of Texas who kind of came on the radar. I was joking around with him yesterday during that team's event, and I said uh, he, he won his match and came over here and started munching on Deb's food. And he's like, she's like, are you done now? He's like, no, we should you know, play one more match after this in the finals. I said, well, if they lose the next two games, you're done. And then they, they, won, they lost the next two games. I was like, oh, man, that might be my bad. Sorry about that. Yeah, Texas definitely has a lot of young, upcoming talent for sure. They got a lot of tough kids. All they do is roll bags and air mill out of nowhere. Oh, stops just a little bit short there for Zeb. That fourth bag, fourth bag blocker does no good. No points awarded for that nowadays. Every time Logan Chamberlain has a hard shot, he lifts his back foot. Ooh, Joe. We got to get Joe in here. Give Joe a job. We need a, a main live stream court official. Joe, if you're looking to get hired, please fill in an application for the ACL, and we can get you hired here. And we can put a stop to all this madness with these players stepping over the line. It's just ruining the game, and we definitely need someone like you to come help us out. So... That would be awesome. <gasps> Ooh, right there I saw it. You were right. Nice bar of soap. 
A little soapy. Oh, he was wanting the end, too. <laughs> Gets a little smile out of Justin. Let's take a look at that one more time. You're talking about that bar of soap. Here it is from Logan. Strong push right into the pile. Gets the click and sends that one on the back of the hole. Nicely done. Uh, thanks. Maybe just let him know he's breaking the rule and let him self-ref. Ooh, I don't know, man. If we let them self-ref, man, then who's going to comment in the chats? Uh, everybody over here beyond that. All right, we'll get we'll get Logan over here. We'll interview him and see if he knows. Nice roll there. That's what you're talking about. Ooh. That's game. That'll do as he almost hit it, but it does spin out and stays there. Let's take a look at that roll, though. It's kind of the roll shot you were talking about, showing the talents. Hits the bag, gets it to go in nicely, but not enough for the victory. Justin Burton Jr., Logan Chamberlain, take that one down. Chat, we're going to take a quick break. Isaiah, appreciate you joining me, man. Yes, sir. We're going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to go talk to Logan and make sure he knows not to do that foot violation anymore. Chat, be right back. All right, chat, we're back. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Hope you guys have had a good time so far. I made sure Logan will follow the rules from here on out, so we are good to go, chat. But if you're enjoying the content, make sure that you download the ACL Fan Zone app. It's a good place for you guys to find all the brackets or even follow your own favorite players. Download the app today. You'll be able to see all the brackets on there. We got things set up. We're ready to go. Tucker Gregory and Chase Frieden. They're going to be throwing the BG Wizards on the far side. Rocking the BG t-shirt and the Throw Brakai jersey. And then in the lane closer to us, Spencer Fabianar and Tony Forbes throwing the Brotherhood Cornhole Guardians. Be on the lookout for that collab next month for me. But let's get this thing underway. They've gone down and back a couple times. We're starting things off. Tucker down the middle and in. Spencer fires the blocker, now steps out. Trying to manufacture some points right here.
Had a few people that were interested in watching this on ACL TV. Um, I don't know if you guys are still in the chat or not, but has anybody had a chance to check out ACLCornhole.tv? And if so, is it working properly on there, or do I need to make a phone call? Let me know if you could, please. Airmail off the back of the board. We are underway. All right, so I expect this pretty much the entire way. Blocker, roll bags, airmails. Good pushes from these four players. They all pretty much play the same style of game. Good job there from Tony getting that grip, getting that left to right movement on it. Slick side misses for Chase. And there's an opportunity here. And same exact shot. Gets enough of Chase's bag to go in with it, but we'll get on the board. 3-3 three, three game now. Matt Brooks checking in says, let's go Noni Forbes. Is that a nickname I'm not aware of? Noni. Noni, Noni, Noni. All right, good blocker to start this off. Maybe a little bit too far to his side. Tucker's going to take like a little baby step out, but it works. Doesn't have to be the world's best blocker as long as it works, right? That's twice that Spencer misses his landing spot. Both times too far to the right. And it just kind of took off on him. And that's a good round. We're going to get some awkward knuckles there from Tucker as we head back down to the left to the right side. You know, I'm looking at all these reactions, chat, and I got to say, I pay attention to a lot of stuff. I pay attention to a lot more than any of the other commentators and producers and ACL talent, stuff like that. We got a lot of thumbs up coming in. Absolutely love every single one of those thumbs up. Got a lot of laughs and smiles because I'm funny as can be. But I mean, the angry faces, I don't get it. What are all the angry faces for? I know that I, I know that I had some struggles yesterday with the internet, but today I think we're killing it. We're doing a really good job today. No internet connectivity issues. So whatever you're upset about, please leave a comment in the chat. I won't be mad at you. I just want to know what I can do better. I care. Help me help you. Oh, there's another one. Who was it? There's two of them. I'm going to watch you guys. It says the European Open is on. All right. Let me grab my phone, and I will send a message. Back off to the right just a little bit. 10 to 5 lead here for Tucker in chase. Tony trying to get something going here. Angry faces are for me. I, I believe it. Whenever I think about Jonathan Torres, I also get an angry face. Ooh, misses the push too far to the left. Had the right speed on it, just missed his landing spot, and Chase and Tucker are going to get away with one. I'm going to try something, chat. Uh, this is either going to work or it's going to be terrible. I click that button now, so let me know if you prefer to, if you watch on ACL TV, if it's working now. So 
I, I, I changed something, and let's see if that fixes it. Ooh, that doesn't look good. Okay, never mind. That didn't work. How about no? Chase is actually going after that bag. I thought that bag was way out of play, but he's still going for it. Slick side down. It bunched on him. He missed his landing spot. Chase unable to get the collect, though. I was kind of surprised at both those bags. Uh, you're killing it as always. Enjoy watching the streams. Appreciate you, Joey. Best commentators, Wally next to Tyler Buckle. Hey, I'm not going to lie. Tyler's pretty good. I would like to get Tyler on some of these opens if he wants to kind of go on tour with us as well. I know we had a few moments where he did some nationals for us last time. Um, I wouldn't mind having Tyler if he's interested to commentate some matches. Let's be honest, you don't have control over the Wi-Fi internet, do you? Wally, you're the best. Keep uh, Just keep doing what you're doing, and thank you very much for doing it. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, I try, man. At the same time, I still do hold myself responsible if anything goes wrong, so... I mean, I, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at it. I know it's nothing I can control, but it is what it is. Is the score right on Spencer's previous frame? I believe so. Unless I missed something, too. Oh, good push. Spencer able to get his bag to fall. We're going to get a timeout here to look at this one. Nice shot. Pushes into the pile. Nothing else is going to fall. Spencer's going to walk out of that with two. That oh, was a super delayed update. Yeah, sometimes it happens. So I don't know why it's working this way. If you guys tuned in the K9 unit sneak peek, you guys kind of saw what was happening. But uh, the scoreboard is basically controlled by another browser on my computer. And if that browser isn't to the forefront of the screen, then it won't update right away. I'm trying to do all my stuff behind the scenes um, while they're changing ends. But I was, I was looking for our next match to get assigned to us. So that might have been my fault as far as not having that tablet set up there. So, for example, he entered the score in there now. It's cool. Boom, 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 boom. Now I'm going to go back here. I'm going to try and find a next match for us. So I'm looking at Jordan Power, Joe Neistat against Ryan Windsor, Matthew Creekkiller. I think that's going to be what comes to us next. And then a score update, Ryan Smith and Ryan Wiedenfeld, 13-7 over Ian Cripps and Jeremy Frazier. So then now i got to pull everything back up to where I had it. Boom, 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 boom. And there's the score. So now we're good. So i got to do all that within like a little quick minute time frame. So it was, it was, it was my bad, I think. I actually think we got a pretty good system now, man. I'm starting to get the hang of it. And it looks like the changes as far as the Wi-Fi worked. And again, Tucker unable to get that hop that he needs to get that bag in on that roll shot. This is a good run for these two young kids, Spencer. I mean, actually, they're all young kids no matter what. But good to see Spencer and Tony traveling all the way out here and having a good time. Missed too far to the right. Perfect blocker right there to kind of take that away. Airmail time. He is able to hit it. Nice job going up top. Gets the airmail to go. Well done. Ooh, somebody sucks at replay. It's me. It's me. I'm not good at it yet. I'm learning. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Oh, bar of soap. Bar of soap. Bar of soap. Come on, chat. Chant with me. Bar of soap. Ah. Didn't throw it hard enough to go for that bar of soap attempt. Staying sticky side down. Pushing into the pile. Misses it. The bag does stay on the board, so he's up at least one point in this round. 
There's a much better push through for Tucker that time. Spencer gets the drip. He's going to get at least one point out of this one, and he will. The spot goes off the back of the board. How aggressive does Tony want to get here? I think you got to throw a blocker at some point. It's a good blocker there in that position. <laughs> he takes a deep breath. Wasn't sure he was going to get that one. It's time to bang it now. You got to shoot this airmail and get the drag, hopefully, for the win. Bag is away. It's going to be a little bit deep. Off the back it goes. Tucker calling for the airmail as well. Chase is going to take a second thought at it. <laughs> Tony wanted that one. Chase regrips. Wow. Landed short, hits the back of the hole, spins around, stays on the board. That was crazy. A nothing falls in. It will be two more points for Spencer and Tony, 19 to 10 now. First shot to start this round here for Spencer is in. Taking a look at the PPRs. As soon as I can find this match, I lost it. There we go. Spencer throwing a 7.29. Tucker a 7.57. Tony with an 8.71 against Chase's 7.14. Yeah, this is going to be hard to collect. Slick side down. Goes at it. Hits it. Doesn't get it to go. That's going to do it. Tucker, Gregory, Chase, Frieden heading to the loser bracket. Spencer, Fabian R. and Tony Forbes take that one down. Take a quick break, chat. Make sure you guys check out Rise Fuel and Energy Drinks. Check out their flavor. We'll be back right after this. All right, ACL Nation, welcome back in here to court number one, brought to you by Rise Fuel Energy Drinks. We're here at open number two in Des Moines, Iowa, having ourselves a pretty good time, staying on the winner's side of the brackets. 
Matter of fact, if I can remember how to do this, let's take a look at these brackets. Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano, 16 to 15 right now. We're Hunter Thorne and Zach Shibner. Winner of that one will take on uh, Justin Burton Jr. and Logan Chamberlain. Right side of the bracket is set to get to the king seat. Ryan Smith and Ryan Wiedenfeld will take on Spencer Fabianar and Tony Forbes. Over in the B bracket, David Morse and Damon Reynolds take down Carson Getty and Jaden Ellis. Winner of P.J. Knott and Anthony Mayball and Justin Lang, Landon Crabtree will take on them. That match is 7-2, Justin and Landon in the lead. Ryan Windsor and Matthew Creek Killer here on court one. Going to take on Jordan Power and Joe Neistead. Winner of this one takes on either Brandon Earls and Tim Bohatton or Kyle Hutley and Dawson Cummings. That match is underway on court 35, 18-17 over there. Can't tell if there's zeros on the scoreboard if we're live just yet. It looks like they are serious, though, so I'm going to believe that they are. Right now, Jordan Power has one bag down the middle and in the hole. Everything else you can see is kind of right there. Windsor looking at an opportunity for an air mail. Pretty much got a free shot at it. The board is even up to this point. He is going to hit a line drive. Air mail gets a piece of that bag but does not get it to fall. So Windsor and Creek Killer on the board first. That's going to make it a 3-0 start. Windsor and Creek Killer in the lead. Matthew Creek Killer and Ryan Windsor, a new pairing for this season. They are throwing the kill shot phantoms. And I believe kind of following up with the Spencer Fabianar and Brotherhood Cornhole theme. Got a collab coming with kill shots in December. So be on the lookout for that. I know it gets cold outside. It'd be really, really cool if we can get some mini bags. You know what I'm saying? To throw inside during the wintertime. Hint, 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 hint. And then we got Joe Neistead and Jordan Power over here throwing the Titan Venoms. Neistead has one on the back of the hole. Creek Killer does a good job of collecting. Bag number four here could be points if he goes in. And he is able to finish off there on bag number four. Windsor and Creek Killer finished pretty close in the standings last season. So seeing them pair up here, even though Windsor and Hicks, in my opinion, had a good season. Provides a new element to this 2024 season that I think a lot of us are going to like. With all this uh, mix and matching of pairings you saw there, Jordan Power and Joe Neistead throwing together this year. So pretty much a preview of one of the Nationals, I'm sure. That one's off to the right a little bit, probably out of play. Then again, with this skill level, you never know. All right, so Brandon Earls and Tim Bohatton Jr. Are able to finish off Kyle Hutley and Dawson Cummings 23-17. to 17, So they're waiting for their winner of this one. talking about here <laughs> you got insider information Isaiah you got anything mic'd up over there uh, watching Matthew Creek Hiller last season down in Oklahoma man when he's not on a main stage and just there at some of the tournaments you know not feeling the pressure he's he's a killer on the boards Jordan today though. Jordan's been on fire since bracket started. He's over here throwing tens and elevens PPR. We saw a lot out of Jeremy Shermerhorn and Joe Neistat as far as the chatter goes last season. So kind of going from one version of chatter to another version of chatter here with Jordan Power. I think with Shermerhorn it was a little bit more fun directed to each other. Kind of talking like oh come on you're terrible or you need to step it up or stuff like that. I think with the Jordan Power, you're going to get a different variety, saying he don't want it, stuff like that, you know what I mean? Jordan's still not going to be talking to the opponent, but he'll be talking to his partner loud enough for the opponent to hear him. Yeah, Jordan's Jordan's a fun guy to watch on all these live feeds. and on good just for the sport, main. man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you look at it. 
He loves that crowd, man. Too far to the right. Uh, of course, you know, Ryan Windsor loves his poker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think Windsor right there was telling him to go around it. And then he kind of stalled Creek Killer. Creek Killer missed the shot. Windsor's tapping himself on the chest, saying, my bad. That's on me. Jordan again, back number one, just kind of off to the right a little bit, setting himself up to kind of chase the entire round. Windsor wanted that one center lane. It's off to the right a little bit as well. And here we go. Messy board after three bags. See how Windsor wants to play this. Looks like he's going airmail. Line drive hits the first one. Windsor looks to have a pretty good grasp on these phantoms with his airmail. I don't think I've seen him miss an airmail in a long time. Good job sneaking around, and not only that, he got the bully out of it and puts himself in good position for the collect. Bang, another one. Yeah, once he gets on, oh, once wow. he's on fire with these shots, man, it's hard to stop him. Yep. Jordan Power did a great job of setting himself back up for that push. Unable to get it to go. And then Windsor another. just another airmail. Locked in right now. Not sure if he was going for the and one or the collect. Either way, both were close. Ends up washing the round out 10 to 10. Then you got Trey Birchfield over here watching. Yeah, Birchfield close in attendance as well. Interesting. Looked like he hit the front of the board right there. Yeah, hit that dead spot. Creek Killer stepping out. He's going after this. Ooh. I think he threw that a little bit hard to go after what he was trying to do. He's trying to land right behind it and get it to go in. That might have been a little slick side finesse attempt for me. But only one point. Score updates, Landon Ling. I always get them backwards. Justin Ling and Landon Crabtree, because Justin's son's name is Landon, which is throwing throw me off. Anyway, they're up 15-5 over P.J. Knott and Anthony Mayball. Winner of that one gets David Morse and Damon Reynolds. Brandon Earls and Tim Bohatton Jr. are already advanced. They're going to take on the winner of this match here for the B bracket. Windsor's going to take a timeout here. Looks like we got Spencer Fabianar and Tony Forbes against Ryan Smith and Ryan Wiedenfeld waiting. Logan Chamberlain and Justin Burton Jr. against Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano also in the A bracket semifinals. Another three of the four going against each other for Texas boys. Windsor was taking a nice hard look at this. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't try and go for like a bar soap attempt. I think that's what he was saying. A heck of a shot if he can pull it off. And he's going sticky side down. Oh, try going for another air mail. Lands on the paw that washes it out. He might not even go for a bar, so he's probably trying to say if he taps that pile and frees up that corner, there's a fall. Because that, he looked like he was happy with that shot. The way he was motioning with his hand over that board, I, I didn't get a chance to switch the cameras. It looked like he was gesturing for a bar or soap, but that's the right call. He's able to pull that one off. Both off to the left there. 11 to 3 here in round 9. Yeah, Joe, Joe's one of those guys, once he's dead center the whole time, he's hard to stop too. Nice little cut around. Man, the way that Creek Killer has done that through the last couple of seasons, just able to stop on that 3 o'clock position, Seems like it lifts up a corner and then just kind of drips back in. Really impressive. I'm so jealous that I can't get my bag to move right to left on the board. I could do left to right all day long. Right to left, not even close.
gotta wash them. Twelve, twelve, four baggers each. Nice little social. I thought I lost my chat for a second. There we go. Oh, hold on, I gotta mute it. My bad. Might have came through the audio. My bad. Uh, la, 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 where were we at? This match, I wanted to see. You're the king of commentating. Maureen says, "What up? Appreciate that. Appreciate that." Ruben and Power not partners this season. Ruben is retired, my friend. Uh, am I doing a mini cornhole collab? We, we will see. We will see. Um, Kill shots and Austin Renard have had conversations with myself about December collab. So that's all I'm going to say there. Um, cut roll collect coming, Tyler. I don't know when that was, but probably you were right. Andrew Winter kill shots cornhole. Let's go. Creek Killer Windsor and Kenneth Social. I missed it. I'll drink to you right now, brother. Appreciate it. All right, chat. I got you guys back up. Sorry about that. I lost you for some reason. Joe Neistat, another member of the Levi Jeans wearing, or not sure if they're Levi's, but Jeans wearing cornhole players, along with Matthew Creek Killer. Not Creek Killer. Wiedenfeld. Oh, yeah. Jeez. I'm tripping with my words right now as I was struggling to get my chat back up. I panicked. All right, let's get the scoreboard back up now for you guys, too. 15 to 3, Windsor and Creek Killer in command of this one, 12 rounds in. Very impressive showing so far. Windsor throwing a 10. Creek Killer with a 9.83. Neistead with a 9. Jordan Power with an 8.6. There's another angry face. Who was that? Who was it? Speak now. I know you're doing stuff. <laughs> oh, whoa. That one got away. Jordan able to get underneath it, so I expect Windsor to try and collect again. Got underneath it. I think he needed one more bag to actually get that to fall, and unfortunately for him, that bag is on the ground. As Jordan Power does another good job of winning on the final shots. Big round there for Jordan. Gets him right back into it, 15 to 8. Side by side might be a little bit too far. I think Neistead could actually collect his. If he can come across the board, he collects the wrong one, but puts himself in good position as he was able to get the spin. But bags is Windsor and Creek Killer. They're th throwing the kill shot phantoms. Kendall is correct. Uh oh. Nine, nine right now. Creek Killer will finish the final shot. Mistake there from Joe K. Three more points for Creek Killer. 18 to 8 as we enter round number 14. I see Ryan setting up a block here and then going Amaral. Airmail, Amaral, no. Nope. Wants a little. Taking away center lane as he misses that one bag out of play. Power takes the bait and going with the block. Oh. Back block there. Windsor's thinking about a short airmail collect with his fourth bag. And Jordan Power does him the favor by knocking him in. Windsor has been throwing kind of a low line drive airmail. Let's see if he makes an adjustment and goes higher. He does and he hits it. Man, Ryan Windsor's airmail right now is just banging. Ooh. All right. Well, I got to sit and go. To... See you guys Big later. Hit. All right, brother. Appreciate you. Good luck to you. Yes, Good sir. hit right there from Ryan Windsor. He's able to bang another airmail. Man, he's just been on fire with this stuff right now. It's remarkable. I'm actually kind of impressed. I didn't think his airmail would be that good this early in the season with new bags, but he is showing he's not missing a step. 20 to 8 right now. First bag is a little bit off to the side. Joe K's got to make sure at least one of these goes in. He's chasing this entire round. Creek Killer's already got one in. Good round. Big bounce. Big hit. Oh, 
Going for the same exact shot. A little shark bait. Sitting right there at Jordan Power. He knows there's a bar of soap opportunity here. <laughs> right, the first thing he said, I can't even tell you what he said. Right off the bat, <laughs> Jordan Power knows that they're sitting here for an opportunity. What would Joe K do? I think Windsor's over here telling him a little more of a defensive approach to basically take away that collect. Jordan Power, Jordan Power's thinking about bar up all day long. I already know that. All right, so Windsor and Creek Killer done talking it over. Creek Killer heads back down to the left-hand side with a 20-8 to eight lead. Let's see what they decided on. Again, Windsor thinking of a defensive approach. <laughs> Windsor's got a smirk on his face. I think he was trying to cut around it. Missed his landing spot. Joe Kay's bag does fall. As far as what the actual board is showing right now, I'm not sure. I think it's going to be two. 20 to 10, I think. Yeah, so Joe Kay is going to get two points out of that one. And it's going to be 20 to 10. Jordan Power, first bag is down the middle and in. He's done a pretty good job of correcting that first bag mistake. They got to be clean from here on out. They'll have first throw the rest of this game. Back block situations here. There's really nothing... Let's see here. Jordan's got two in. He's throwing seven on three. I don't think he needs to do anything too crazy here. Basically saying Windsor's bag is already in. You should be able to cut around that. Oof. I don't like that call at all. He said you can go up and try and drag yours. Okay, now they're on the same page. Talking about the safety play. Or not. Roll attempt. Jordan's <laughs> he's going to eventually get that roll down to where it doesn't look as bad as it looks. There's way too much speed on that. Tried to use the pile to roll the bag. And Ryan Windsor bangs another airmail. I mean, that's the story of the whole game. Ryan Windsor's airmail has been on point that game. We'll take a quick break, chat, when we come back. More winter side action here in Des Moines, Iowa, right after this.
All right, chat. Welcome back here to Des Moines, Iowa. Open uh, number two. Got a pretty good one for you guys. Not going to lie. This is pretty exciting. Big matchup here. BG on BG Crime. And I can't even mute my microphone right now, chat. Hold on. Oh, no. There we go. Man, I hope you guys aren't hearing that coming through the speakers. If you are, I apologize. I'm just trying to get my chat pulled up when my phone charges. All right. So here we go. Logan Chamberlain, Justin Burton Jr., Gavin Cano, Fisher Hamilton. This is a matchup that we're going to see pretty much the entire season. Before this match started, I said, okay, winner gets an interview. I don't think any of them actually wanted to come over and interview. But we'll see. We'll see how it plays itself out. This is a match to go to the king seat. Fisher's going to get the spin. Looks like they're going to win. We're starting things off right-hand side. Fisher lined up against Logan. Here we go. Should have a good crowd gathering around to see this one. Fisher Hamilton's first shot is off to the right just a little bit. And Logan misses low and to the left. Fisher just decides to go ahead and clean it up. It is a more difficult collect for Logan. He does a really good job of bringing it back into the ACL red zone there. And there it is. Another good shot. Slick side down from Logan Chamberlain. Able to push through. Fisher Hamilton misses his collect, and Logan able to finish this right here. He will get three. Sticky side down. Whoa, bounced on him instead. Landed lower on the board than he wanted to. Ends up being a nine on eight, so Fisher gets out of that with one instead of giving up three. Huge break for Fisher and Gavin. Logan Chamberlain and Justin Burton Jr. took down open number one. Had a phenomenal season last year, taking down national number one, obviously. One of the best rookie teams in a long time. Had a lot of hype coming into the season. They lived up to it. I got big expectations for Gavin Cano this year. Kind of noticed that Fisher, over the last few times I've seen him, has kind of taken on the leadership role. You know, kind of coaching Gavin along, encouraging him at the right moments. So I like seeing this partnership blossom. There's a missed airmail off the back. Fisher giving him the thumbs up down to the left-hand side, saying it's okay. We got this. Still early. That's a five spot. Five to one there. That bag sitting on top of the pile. I think that's a green light for Logan to start shooting some air mills. First one he's going to shoot is going to land short. Knocks in his bag. Not sure if Fisher is wanting an air mill or bar soap. I couldn't see what his motion was on his hand, but either way, he is going for the bar soap. He's going to miss it. That thing goes flying off the back. Or is he wanting like a little penguin attempt or something? I don't know. Backside air mill is open. I think Fisher's kind of deceived by how it looks on the screen. You can kind of see there's more room than we're thinking. Good roll, though, from Fisher. Able to get a good hop out of that one. Gets the bag to go in the hole. JBJ fires a blocker. Gavin's going to replace it.
He wanted that more side by side. Ended up kind of kicking off to the left, but it's still in play for him there. Way too far to the right. Fisher calling for this push on the right side. He wants to free it up. He's able to get it. Bag on the left doesn't go. 10 on 10 wash. I think everybody's kind of happy with the way that round finishes up. The score is going to stay 5 to 1. Over in the B bracket, Brandon Earls and Tim Bohatton Jr. are going to head to court 31 to take on Ryan Windsor and Matthew Creek Killer. Justin Lang and Landon Crabtree 8 to 7 over David Morris and Damon Reynolds right now on court 29. take a time out to look at this situation here. These bags is kind of ugly and elevated. Kind of take a look at it right here. You can see how elevated they are off the ground. There's a little bit of a window underneath that bag that's sitting on top. I don't even know what happened. All I know is nothing fell. Bottom sides of these bags are all too similar in color for me to tell the difference. Sticky side kind of wedges right into the pile. And Logan with the grimace. Logan rechecking the math. Says, I'll wait it to wash. We're fine. Kind of moved a little bit. I don't think anything's going to fall. Nothing does. Ends up being a four-on-four -four wash. Not the prettiest for PPRs, but scoreboard stays the same. Five to one. JBJ and Logan in the lead. Winner of this match goes to the king seat. In my opinion, probably takes down the king seat. On the other side of the bracket, Smith and Wiedenfeld, Spencer Fabian R. and Tony Forbes. Almost had enough to get over the ro with that roll attempt. Good effort. Airmail clean from Justin. Gavin hits the backside as well. Nice shots, gentlemen, on the left-hand side. Head back down to the right now. Fisher and Logan, bags in hand, score 7-1. Round number seven, chat. Fisher misses his cut, kind of confused. Didn't really have any bite on it at all. Uh, who am I rooting for in this game? I don't really have any rooting interest when I watch these, but I mean, Gavin is on Team K9. He was my pick to win in doubles here with Fisher, so I'm going to stay there. Even though they're down 7-1 to right now, I'll kind of stick with it. Fisher looking very confused after that round.
Gavin too far to the left on that one. That bag is now out of play. Justin taps it just to make sure. Twelve on ten. Justin's going to escape that one with two more. Adding to the lead, making it now nine to one. Logan stepping out, asking if he should bully it. Too hard at that, though. Knocks in Fisher, goes flying off the back. Fisher misses his collect. Some confusion. Not getting the reaction he wants on these boards. Don't know if he can get that collect. Collect, it's, uh, it's on the edge, but it's going to be hard. Higher release point. See if that bag's going to hang on. It is on slick side. It does not hang on. But right now, Logan's looking at seven on two. Fisher slick side finishes off. It's going to be seven on five. So Logan kind of let off the hook. Even though they're in the lead, they're not playing they're exactly their cleanest game. Check PPRs after this round here, chat. It's 11 to 1, round number 10. Winner of this goes to the king seat match in bracket A. Didn't really have much bite on that one, but I kind of like it sitting there. Airmail time for Justin. He's going to miss off the back. That's a tight fit. Gavin's going to take a timeout as they discuss how they play out the rest of this round. Got their answers. They got their bags in hand. See what Gavin elects to go with. Good job hitting that little gap on that roll. Really wasn't much room there, but Gavin found just enough to make it count. Just looks like push into the pile, but not able to get that bag in hand to go. So this could be a big round if he's able to get the collect slick side down. Nicely done there from Gavin Cano. Let's take a look at this roll that kind of set this situation up. Lands on the board, hits that back right side, goes in, big points. Getting first throw back in Fisher's ham, hand, 11-6. to six. Blocker on his own side, Fisher. Hits the pile, the bag flips over to slick side, but it does stay behind Logan's bag. Logan able to get underneath his, lift it up, kind of a penguin-esque motion, if you will. And then he cleans it up, heading into bag number three. Logan fires a blocker. Dead center, level two position. Fisher likes it, big hop. Finishes off his four-bagger. Logan slick side down, misses it. And that push ends up going off the board. Five more. And just like that, chat here in round number 12, we are tied. Two back-to-back -back big rounds to get them back into this game. A little teaser back here from Gavin to start round number 12. And then the replacement. Slick side tilt on it. Gavin's starting to throw some confidence right now. You can tell. I think you go back to that one round where he hit that backside air mill to match Justin. He has been pretty much lights out ever since that shot. Rolling, air mailing, collecting, 
everything working for Gavin Cano right now. Meanwhile, Fisher and, I'm sorry, Justin and Logan, wheels are starting to fall off at the wrong time in three rounds. This thing has flipped on its head. And just like that, it is now 16 to 11. That is three 12 on sevens in a row. It went from 11 to 1 to 16 to 11, just like that. Checking in on the other matches, David Morris and Damon Reynolds, 13. Lang and Crabtree, 14. Windsor Creek Killer, 16. Earls Bohatton, 4. Up next, we're going to get Spencer Fabian R and Tony Forbes against Ryan Smith and Ryan Wiedenfeld. Logan just struggling right now. Fisher able to finish off again. Can, the only problem is this time he cannot afford to give up another five. And that was 45 feet in the air. Only made it about 17 feet down the court. And just like that, wow, in four rounds, this thing has flipped. Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano advance to the King seat chat. Commercial break. When we come back, the Ryans against the Brotherhood right after this. All right, Chad, welcome back here to Des Moines, Iowa. We just got done watching some BG on BG crime. I'm telling you, man, not exactly how I saw that one go. But regardless, Fisher Hamilton and Gavin, Gavin, Gavin Cano, Gavin, able to pull that one off. Let's go ahead and bring in our BG player spotlight. Fisher, Gavin, what up, guys? Welcome in. What's up? What's up? Hope you guys uh, enjoyed those four rounds at least, right? That was a yeah, yeah, change of pace. Yeah. <laughs> From 11 and 1. To coming all the way back and taking that one down. So congratulations, guys. What bags were you guys throwing there? Wizards. Wizards? Uh, last year's. Still. Yeah, some 2023 BG Wizards. Okay, have you got you guys? I think I talked to you yesterday. You said you don't have your 24s broken in the way you want them just yet? No, sir. What's your guys' yeah. preferred break-in method for throwing these? Tall sauce. Tall sauce? Yeah. I usually just boil. Boil? It was just water. Does anybody just actually throw their bags anymore to break them in? That's all. I just throw them after that. I don't do anything it, else. Like it no, takes like a long time to get them how you want them. Yeah, if when you you're getting them. like some, like we have like five sets at a time to break in usually, so it's hard to throw them all. Okay, so we'll talk about the bags a little bit while Ryan Smith, Ryan Wiedenfield, Spencer, Fabian R, and Tony Forbes are going down and back. Uh, Fisher sometimes usually throw the um, mercenaries as well, don't you? Yes, sir. Can you tell me a little bit about the mercenaries and why you like those bags so much? Uh, I like them because they're easy to block and roll with. Um, they're a lot slower, so 
they make it, they're like easily easy to control too. Like they don't like kick bad or anything. Okay, and then uh, Gavin, you pretty much always been wizard. Yeah, I like the wizards. I think I like kind of. I don't really like the mercenaries get a little bit too slow, but with the wizard, they get a little bit like slow as well. But I feel like I can control them way better. Like right. they're, they're more whole friendly. Gotcha. And then last question, I'll let you guys go when this match is about to start here. Do you guys feel like the boards are playing fast today, or how do you feel like the boards are playing? And in the last night, they were playing pretty Not fast. Really. They're pretty sticky today. Yeah, sticky today? They, yeah. They were fast yesterday, though. Yeah, I feel like I'm chunking them way harder than I was yesterday. They're, they're kind of way more stickier than they were yesterday. I think there was one feels round. more human in here. More human? Yeah. I think more bodies is going to do that. Yeah. I'm there not wasn't too many people here yesterday. No, nah, not at all. All right, boys. Well, yeah, we had that one round where I think Fisher uh, told Gavin to shoot that airmail right after Justin Burton Jr. with that backside. You hit that bag. You guys did not look back after that. So yeah. whatever a little bit of confidence you guys had those last four or five rounds, man, keep that up. Don't want to put too much pressure on you guys. But you guys are my pick to win this whole thing. So yeah. all right, keep it going, man. Thanks, Good luck. Sir, thank Thanks, you. boys. Thanks, Appreciate it. All right, chat. Going to get back into this one here. They're finishing their down and backs. So we got uh, Ryan Wiedenfeld and Ryan Smith to take on Spencer Fabian R and Tony Forbes. This is the match to see who's going to play Fisher and Gavin. As they finish their down and backs, I think we're going to spin things off over here on the right-hand side. They punch each other in the fist, and we are ready to go. Will we see some Brotherhood bags in the finals? I know Spencer Fabianaro is one of my players to watch. Tony Forbes has been pretty impressive this weekend as well, making it to the juniors finals. And obviously you know about Ryan Smith and Ryan Wiedenfeld running it back again this season. Going down. He's throwing the Witchers here. Nice job. Able to get that collect to go. Big hit. Pushes that one in. So we're kind of getting a chance to see the entire BG arsenal right now at work. As Ryan Smith is able to get that collect. Let's take a look at it one more time. Slick side down. Big push. Hits a nice landing spot. My leaves are terrible. We'll try that again. My bad. I'll do it after. Oh, never mind. I'm just messing this all up. Okay, we'll watch it anyway. As Ryan Wiedenfeld hits a big airmail. This was not one of my best moments, chat. Not going to lie. Ryan going for a second airmail attempt. Everything you can see is either in the hole or right there on the board. Ryan's down to his final back. Good collect from Spencer. That was probably the worst collection of replays I've ever seen in my life, chat. I think I nailed this one, though. Pretty sure I nailed this push from Spencer Fabian R. See, I know what I'm doing. All right, so yeah, after that mess, <laughs> the score is still 0-0. Zero, zero. It's a work in progress. I expect a message any second now from Corey about uh, how terrible my replays are. Guardian able to drip on the final shot right there from Tony. 12 on 12. I'm down to my last sip, chat. Social. Drink it with me. And there it goes. Wiedenfeld kind of skipped over the hole right here. Here's an opportunity for Spencer. He's able to get it nicely done. Almost falls over the board. But they are on the board first. Four to nothing here for Spencer and Tony. Do you need that fixed? 
I know a pretty good person that fixes it. Who's that? My mom. Where? What is it? All right, let's bring on Carson Getty. I'm not oh, maybe, that. maybe not. Okay. He was putting on the headset for a second. Oh, yes, that's correct. That's correct, Matt. I forgot. Noni. Noni Forbes. Noni Forbes. My bad. How's it going, Wally? What up, Carson? Not bad, man. Just oh. saw a pretty good, interesting match there with bracket the B. Fisher and Gavin. Not sure if you saw the end of that one or not. No, was I was playing. 11 to 1 and then 12 on 7, 12 on 7, 12 on 7, 10 on 2 to end it. Go to bracket to B and scroll to the bottom. Or it should be right there. Up, right, right. 22 to 11. Up. Oh, 22 to 11 over Alec Ryan and Ethan Walker. Check the PPRs. I haven't had a chance to check yet. 925 and a 971. Got to get them up. Those are rookie numbers. It was also a little bit dirtier. <laughs> we got the winner of Birchfield, Nico, PJ, and Mayball. Wiedenfeld's going to call a timeout to look at this one here. See what they're discussing here. It looks like he's talking about hitting this bag on the right hand side. Oh. I don't know if Wiedenfeld's exactly sold on this angle. Ryan Smith is pushing it pretty hard, though. See if they decide to go with it. All right, looks like he's got his decision made. The bag is in hand. He's stepping all the way out. So that tells me he is going to go out after this angle. Hits the spot, doesn't get it to go. Again, I don't think Wiedenfeld was exactly sold on that shot selection. Four nothing start here for Noni and Spencer. They're starting to heat up too. They're getting a little bit more confident here on the broadcast court. Missing too far to the left. There's a lane here. Smith has two bags left. His objective here is to collect the first bag on the first shot and put himself in good position to get the second bag on the next shot. Gets the tilt. This is going to be a harder push, but both those bags didn't move. They kind of shifted. You got to get a good block here for Tony. Noni, sorry. That's the spot you wanted. Those bags are kind of moving. Wiedenfeld calling for the airmail. He's discussing right now that whenever the bags were shot or when they hit the board, it moved enough. He thinks that they're going to fall. Wiedenfeld's calling for the airmail again no matter what. He says, worst case scenario, you go off the back and give up one, which would still be in a better position than they're at right now. Apparently showing eight on three. Airmail lands. He's going to hit it perfectly. Nicely done there from Ryan Smith. Able to hit this airmail exactly where he wanted it. Steps into it. All three bags on one shot. And we got to do full speed replay there because Ryan Wienfeld has no respect for replays at all. So he's able to fire the first bag right down the middle and in. Sorry, Corey. I know I forgot my timeout graphic again. I'm working on it. I'm forgetting all the time. Slick side misses too far to the right and takes himself off the back of the board. Weedenfield. Right, Weedenfield hits it. 
big 9-6 lead change. Ryan Smith with first throw. Carson Getty stepping back in the booth. What up, man? Nothing. Just waiting for my next game to be called. Got the winner of Birchfield and Morales and Mayball and Knott. And it's Birchfield and Nico are up 19-8. Joe, I thought we solved this, man. I thought you were going to be the... Uh I thought you were going to be the foot foul police, Joe. Told you, man. Put in an application. We'll get you hired. We'll get things squared away, man. We got to stop this violence. Our last, uh, our last foot foul police. You know, he's over in Israel right now, handling some other stuff. But we'll try and get him back. You know, priorities and all. I mean, it is a big deal. You know, this is open number two, and if we don't put a stop to this right now. It'll go on the entire season. Social. I had a replay in mind, and then I forgot what I was going to do with it. Anyway, 9-6. to six. See, that's what happens whenever I start thinking about foot fouls, man. I forget how to do my actual job. Off to the left-hand side, Whedon fell with an opportunity. He matched him. That's what we call a bait bag. Got a magnet in it, pulled him right to it. I believe we're going to get a news team in here to discuss the new foot foul rule. There will be videos made. There will be instructions. There will be warnings sent. There will be a lot of things taken in place. Wiedenfeld again stepping all the way out. Hard tilt on that back landing spot. Just too much movement on it. It goes flying off the back. That's 0 for 2 on that step all the way out technique. So even though Ryan Smith has an idea on his head, Ryan Wiedenfeld has not been able to execute it. Slick side push into the pile. Fabian R. able to get the tap for it to fall in. One point in their direction as we head right to left. able to finish off his fourth and Smith does the same thing on his side double four bagger chat what do you guys call when all eight bags are down the middle in the hole in your area I know there's multiple terminologies for it go ahead and put it in the chat Kenneth says social that's what we call it that means we all raise our glasses in appreciation for good shooting and we all take a sip of our favorite beverage that's why we call it a social chat Dustin says, Tony is on Fija. You ain't lying, brother. Winner of this match goes to the king seat match. We got our other king seat match already assigned. David Morris and Damon Reynolds taking on Ryan Windsor and Matthew Creekiller. That's starting on court 28. Got PPRs in this one. Tony is throwing an 11-3-3. Ryan Smith with an 11-6-7. Fabian R. and Wiedenfeld over on the left-hand side, both throwing sevens. Well, never mind. Wiedenfeld now with an eight. Spencer with a 7-6-7. Seven, seven. Good job there by Smith. Kind of pushing into that pile, setting himself up here for a collect. There might be enough there for him to get it too. Wiedenfeld telling him to go slick side. And that works. All bags down the middle. And then Smith continuing to throw lights out. Finishes off his four-bagger. Good job. Good coaching. Good execution. That's going to be a 12 on 10. Twenty-seven out of twenty-eight for Ryan Smith down the middle and in the hole. 
25 out of 28 for Tony on the other side. Imagine throwing 11.14 and getting outscored like this. Sheesh. There's that bounce. <laughs> he said, why can't I just do that? Why isn't that just working? Good job there from Spencer. Gets the bounce and the collect. Push through right there. He leaned into that one and kind of carried his arm across the body. That's why he missed that push too far to the side. I think the players are kind of, well, Smith and Wiedenfeld at least kind of joking around about how to push right now with these witchers on this board. I think the consensus right now is they want to push through on sticky side, which is why Smith asked him last time. Good blocker there from Tony. Trying to slow Ryan Smith down. Right now, nothing has worked. Again, Smith on 11.71 up to this point, and that blocker does work. He's off the back of the board. That's only his second miss of the game. Let me get you the guy's scoreboard back there, my bad. As we are in round number 15. Big airmail there from Ryan, not missing too much longer. Thank you. A long day. Long day for that. I know. That's why I said I don't want one. Thank you for asking, though. All right. Commercial break. Score isn't working. Yeah, I fixed it. My bad. My bad. I saw my beer coming. I got distracted. Man. Thirteen to nine. Tony is going to get away with that one there, so that blocker does pay off. I mean, Ryan's not missing much. That's only his second miss of the game. I guess technically third with the one on the ground, but eleven point one three still after all that. That airmail looked weird coming out of his hand. Didn't have the right release on it. Wiedenfeld misses his as well. Winner of this match will go to the king seat to take on Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano. Do you have a roll bag? A what? A roll bag? I can't sometimes. Can? Do you feel like the boards are, or these bags are bouncing on this board with the pucks on it? I agree, yeah. You do? I, that's why I was trying to say that's at least going to go in more And that's what I messed up in that women's game, not shit in the air mail. Because I was scared they were going to pump exactly like they did. Smith is trying to bring that one a little bit closer. I wouldn't be surprised the way he's throwing right now if he doesn't just go up after this bag. Kind of looked like he shook his head like he's trying to talk himself out of it. Let's see what the body does, though. He did talk himself out of it. I'm surprised. Would have figured the confidence would have kind of just laid into that one and let it go. Pat Groff, what up, my dude? Welcome in. All bags down the middle. Really not much to say there, chat. As we enter round number 19, score's going to stay 13 to 9. All players kind of heating up at the right time. Good look at young talent here in this match. Ryan Smith looks like a grandpa.
This has been Ryan Smith's probably worst round right here. He still almost gets a piece of that one to fall. Very impressed with what I'm seeing out of Spencer Fabianar and Tony Forbes so far in this match. Went to round number 20, tied 13-13. We'll check PPRs after this one, chat. This could be a, uh, what they call it, instant classic, if you will. This is an A bracket match. Checking on the loser side to see who's left alive in it. Justin Burton Jr. and Logan Chamberlain over on the loser side. Tucker Gregory and Chase Frieden on court two. They fall now to Steve Bernasette and Philip Lopez Jr. On the other side, Elizabeth Tennyson and Quinn Reeves, 11. Hunter Thorne and Zach Scheibner, four. Over in the B bracket on the loser side, we got Carson Getty and Jaden Ellis on court 26. They are down to Trey Birchfield and Nico Morales, nine to six. Kyle Hutley and Dawson coming 17 to nine over Sebastian Schaefer Ford, Nick Miscal. Winner of that one gets Justin Lang and Landon Crabtree. This is a big shot here from Ryan Wiedenfeld. Bag is away, lands on the pile, and everything falls at the right time. Let's take a look at that one one more again. Ryan Wiedenfeld had his mind made up. Ryan Smith kind of coached him into it. Let's take a look at this shot one more time. Bag is away, lands on the pile perfectly, slowly but surely everything drips in. Big points. Ryan Wiedenfeld right there making it 19 to 13. First bag on the edge. I promise you guys, PPRs, let's take a look at it real quick. So Tony Forbes throwing a 10.8. Ryan Smith with a 10.7. Ryan Wiedenfeld an 8.8. .8. Spencer Fabianar with an 8.1. That bag off to the right-hand side could be it. Stops a little bit short there on bag number three, but that's fine. Tony's the one chasing. He's got the work to do, and that's going to work. Kicked off to the side. And this is pretty simple. Just in for the win. Wiedenfeld says don't worry about it. Kind of following up with Katie said. Wiedenfeld never worries about anything. Right on cue. Ryan Smith, final shot. Sneaks in for the win. There's a small sliver of hope here. And they're going to take a timeout to look at it. And I'm going to remember my timeout graphic this time. Corey, how about that? And he's back. All right, so it's pretty simple. Up top, hit the airmail, get the drag. Don't miss or your game is over. You had to lose his bracket. He's going to be off the back of the board after throwing an 11 point something heading into that round. Ryan Smith, Ryan Wiedenfeld take it down. Big airmail from Ryan Wiedenfeld. Chat, commercial break time. We come back. Let's get to the king seat matches right after this.
All right, Chad, welcome back here. Court number one in Des Moines, Iowa, brought to you by Rise Fuel Energy Drinks. Big victories by both these players. On the left-hand side, Gavin Cano hot down the stretch. Ryan Wiedenfeld with a huge airmail. This is the king seat match for bracket A. Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano come in as your overall number one seed. Ryan Smith and Ryan Wiedenfeld, they come in as your 30 seed. Let's take a look at their runs to get here. Ryan Smith, Ryan Wiedenfeld, 21-2 over Cheeky and Mike Patterson, 23-3 over Bern Bernicette and Lopez. 21-0 over Elizabeth Tennyson and Quinn Reeves. 21-7 over Jeremy Frazier and Ian Cripps. And then 24-13 over Spencer Fabianart and Tony Forbes. Path for Fisher and Gavin. 26-10 over Paul Rogers and Logan Butts. 23-2 over Peyton DeWald and Cody Hames. 21-12 Will Smith and Brody Price. 22-15 over Hunter Thorne and Zach Scheibner. And then 24-11 over Justin Burton Jr. and Logan Chamberlain. So here we go, chat. For the king seat here in bracket A. Finishing their down and backs. Fisher Hamilton with a left-handed shot. Still better than my shots. Gavin's going to take a second to walk down to talk it out. More BG on BG crime. Ryan Wiedenfeld's throw is just so relaxed that I don't even know if we're live right now. I don't even think Fisher Hamilton was back over that mat before Ryan started his windup in that toss. <laughs> this tells me they're not live yet. All right. And the left-handed airmail attempt from Wiedenfeld. Yeah, definitely not live. I'm going with not live, chat. But let me know. Who do you guys think? 279 of you in the chat. Place your bets right now. Who are you guys taking? I'm taking BG for the dub as Ryan Smith almost hits my camera to start this live feed with the spin. Here we go. David Morrison, Damon Reynolds tied 14-14. I guess if they're underway. I believe they're underway. That's in the king seat for bracket B. Smith able to cover it around there, but he is still kind of upset with that bag that's on the ACL logo as Fisher's going to stop a little bit short. The good news is everybody has to play in the same environment here on the main broadcast court. The bad news is it's an environment that not many of them like. Angel Camarena, what up, my dude? Welcome in, man. Hope you're having a great weekend so far. Clayton checking in. Kevin Cano, 21-14. Sonia. Says Connell Hamilton for the dub. Ryan and Ryan for the win. 22-18 from Adam Sipe. So we're kind of kicked off the side. Connell, hard push. Bag just jets on him, goes off the back of the board. I believe Wiedenfeld is going to get out of this round with three points as we go back right to left. Again, championship court brought to you this weekend by Rise Fuel Energy Drinks. Check them out. If you haven't already, they got the lemonade, the Kool-Aid, and the Sunny Delight energy flavored drinks, man. They're amazing. Had a chance to get them at open number one. Blocker right there from Fisher Hamilton. Fisher off to the left a little bit. Still collectible. I've seen Fisher go slick side and get that bag before, but chasing points right now, they don't want to chase the round. 
Now there's no reason to even go after it. But that's just what I would do. Fisher thinks otherwise. Block attempt coming here from Ryan Smith. If he's accurate, it could be points. Too far to the right. Eight to two here in round number four. Update on the King Seat match over there in bracket B. 20 to 14, Ryan Windsor and Matthew Creek Killer. Never mind, that one's over. Creek Killer, Windsor take it down. David Morris, Damon Reynolds heading to the loser's bracket final. Figure out who they play in just a little bit. We're down about seven or eight teams. Trey Birchfield, Nico Morales, 17-14 over Carson Getty and Jaden Ellis. Kyle Hutley and Dawson Cummings, 19-15 over Sebastian Schaefer Ford, Nick Mescal. I'm telling you right now, you could put a ring around the hole for a, like a cowbell or something. Every time Wiedenfeld hits an air, it still won't go off. He's clean. Very accurate. Taught him everything I know, folks. I'm the best. Tell everybody else. Ryan Smith's cut is a little bit different. His cut is more of a finesse cut. It kind of lands on the board with the hard tilt. Just gets that bag to kind of go around, whereas Fisher, Gavin, and even kind of Wiedenfeld for that matter, they put a little bit more rotation on with some more bite. Doesn't matter how it goes in, though, if you know what you're doing. Airmail time. Looks like he kind of second-guessed himself. If the boards are bouncing like the players are saying there, I think it's going to be a benefit to Smith and Wiedenfeld as they play a little bit more of a finesse game. They let the bag do the tricks. They don't really have to work at, uh, you know, shooting the bag in the hole or stuff like that. All you got to do is be accurate on where you're wanting to go. All right. Should I, should I turn her mic on? Right. Turn it off. <laughs> right there, just failed. He just failed at the test I was going to give you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that answers that question. Keep the mic off. Noted. Come on, Wally. <laughs> <laughs> Wiedenfeld in. Kano's bag is out of play here, so Wiedenfeld could add to his lead. 12 to 2 right now. Misses the final shot. <laughs> Wiedenfeld stares down Kano, almost to say, you know you got lucky there, right? Making sure I got my rubber band in there still. All right. I'm still trying to get Justin Burton Jr. and Ryan Wiedenfeld to play in a mullet match. The loser has to shave their mullet, but neither one of them are biting. I offered them $5,000 for this uh, match to happen. They're not having it. Good landing spot there from Ryan Smith, able to get that bag to go back left to right. Fisher's got one bag left in hand. Let's see how Smith wants to play this. Able to get the block down that time. Sticky side up for the airmail. Gets one to fall. The other one staying slick side on the front of the hole, but the bag in hand goes off the back. That's going to be three more. See, I'm the type of player that whenever I throw my bags, I throw finesse. I let the bag and the boards do the work. I don't really think about throwing hard and getting these cuts and rolls and stuff like that. So the board's bouncing is a factor that I never would have thought coming into play. What's the question, Wally? What question? What they're talking about? Yeah. I think they're talking about the strategy and how they want to handle the rest of this game. They're currently down in this match. 
they got to figure out something to get it going. 15 to 2. We're only eight rounds in. It appears it is in question. Like, throw your game, get it in the hole. Sounds simple enough. Throw your game, get it in the hole, she says. Let's go, Ryan. Uh, okay, he's my boy. All right, Gavin's got the bag in hand. Now let's see if he wants to go side by side or just go in. He does go side by side. Level one blocker, Wiedenfeld immediately fires a back block. Little cut shot coming from Gavin, doesn't get over. Wiedenfeld's airmail, boom, clean. Gavin's going to miss that one. Wiedenfeld again up top, hits it on the red zone, gets it to drip. Cotto needs to hit this one. If not, it's over. It's going to go off the board. That's going to do it. Ryan Smith, Ryan Wiedenfeld take that one down. They own the king seat in the A bracket. Sebastian Schaefer Ford and Nick Mescal advance to take on Justin Lang and Landon Crabtree. Take a commercial break. When I come back, Chet, figure out where we're at in the bracket right after this.
Are good and ready to go live here. They're going down and back as Nick Mescal makes his way to the court. All right, Josh Keck has made his way over to the court. You see his big old dome right there on the side of the screen. So I'm wondering what's going to happen here. We'll get a we'll get a Josh Keck on the microphone and we'll find this out. We might be getting ourselves a live stream court official. Somebody tagged that uh, one guy. I forgot his name. Who was it? Joe? Was that his name? Somebody tell Joe. He'll be happy. Was it Joe? I think it's Joe. So terrible with names, even if they're in the chat. <laughs> Josh. Josh. Against the wall. Landon, what's up, dude? All right, so we got Nick Mescal, and it looks like Sebastian Schaefer Ford. They are throwing some type of MX bags. Then to get a chance to take a look at what they were throwing, Landon Crabtree and Justin Lang have made their way to the court. Josh Keck is plugging in his computer, so we'll find out what that means here in a little bit. Let me refresh my chat real quick, guys, so I can make sure we're up to date on all these comments. I know it's going to play the audio, so bear with me. There we go. All right, what's going on over there, Chris wants to know. I don't know, man. I'm scared as well. All you have to do is block Gavin. No, that ain't the case. Who do I got in this game? I don't know. I guess I'll go Landon and Justin. Can't see. I think I got zeros on the scoreboard. Yeah, it looks like zero zero. So I believe they could be live. This could be the first round here. Good blocker there from Sebastian. Sebastian not afraid to rock that cowboy head. I ain't gonna lie, I like it. Nick Moore checking in says Nick and Sebastian throwing the meltdowns. Let's go. I don't necessarily think that was a situation where Gavin lost that game because of the blocks. I think it was a situation where Fisher and Gavin maybe got a little bit too frustrated. 
and uh, probably needed a moment to regroup and relax. Oh, kind of slung that one. Did not get it to go. See Josh Keck over here to my right, keeping a real close eye on that foot line. Landon at the moment does not look to be stepping over it. Hard push into the pile. Doesn't get anything to go. So it is official. Josh is over here officially to watch the feet. Oh, here we go. Now, I talked I talked him into it without talking him into it. What up, dude? How's hey, it going, dude? What's how, shaking? How are things, dude? A little bit of chaos around here. I'll say, have have there been discussions that have happened for the reason for you to be over here? No. Um, any official can come watch any game that they want. Okay. All right. So I'm over here, and I'm watching this game. Can you I let them know you're going to officiate it? I did. I let them know I'm here to watch for foot fouls. Um, it's a little difficult to watch for foot fouls and shot clock and everything else all at once. So I'm focusing on foot fouls right now. And if I see one, I'll do the appropriate action. So I'm going to hang up here and uh, let oh. you do your job. I'll do my job. Okay, bye. I love you. Yep. All right. So there you go. He's going to do his job for once in his life. Instead of hitting Ottawa's sign, he's actually going to work today. I wish I could remember who it was in the chat that was heckling me all day about these foot fouls. Now we got somebody here to watch foot fouls, and he's not even here to comment it and say, good job on watching foot fouls. Does Crabtree throw reverse spin like Tom G? Absolutely. It's so weird. I don't get it. I don't understand. Oh, man, scoreboard. My bad. My bad. There it is. 4 nothing. Justin Lang and Landon Crabtree in the lead. I mean, I do got to say, Landon and Sebastian both are lining up really, really close to that front line. But I don't see that either one of them are going over. It'll be interesting to see how this plays a factor as far as if either one of them pushes into the pile. But it does look like Josh Keck is kind of stationed up here for the rest of the day as he is plugged in his laptop. And he will be assigning matches from my station. Landon asking if we go with a push shot here. Looks like Justin Lang agrees. 4 nothing lead here. He's going to try and go after this bag and go left to right. Takes everything in with it. That's fine. How many times has your dad foot foul? How many times has your dad foot foul? Huh? Oh, I never. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen him move his feet once he gets planted. Even his pushes, he doesn't. Yeah, even his pushes, he doesn't lift his feet up. No, it wasn't DJ. It was, I think it was like Joe or something like that. <laughs> I cannot wait for the first foot foul to get called, and then everybody who like was on the opposite end of it starts complaining about how it affects the game. <laughs> William Malone, let him play. Let him play. Bottom line is no matter what happens, not everyone is going to be happy. We just hope to continue having fun at it. Good blocker to start off this round by Sebastian. I'm going to let the foot foul police do the foot foul things, and I'm going to go ahead and commentate the rest of this match now, chat. Good blocker, though, to start off this round. I expect a little bit of drama. Reverse spin right into that pile.
Give me a second, chat. Facebook is not updating my chat, so I'm trying to get my uh, phone up to date. But it's a little bit behind. Regardless, though, score is 6-2, to two, entering round number 6. Again, this is a loser bracket match, so the loser of this one is eliminated. Checking in on the A bracket, we got Hunter Thorne and Zach Scheibner, 18-14 to 14 over Spencer Fabianar and Tony Forbes. Winner of that one will play Justin Burton Jr. and Logan Chamberlain. Winner of this match here will play either Brandon Earls and Tim Bohatton or Trey Birchfield and Nico Morales. They're tied 12-12 to 12 over there on court number four. And now I am able to get my chat pulled back up. And we're Gucci. So let's go. And for six. It's as easy as that, folks. All you got to do is just throw sixes. Score sixes, I mean. Lead change on that one. Eight to six now. It was uh, kind of interesting how this weekend shaped up, Lynn. And let me tell you what happened, bro. So we were at the Midwest Conference Championships, right? We're playing some baggos. Landon Crabtree's in the championship match. I believe it was the blind draw or maybe doubles. I can't remember. Either way, we're in the championship match. He throws a bag in front of the board. Short, right? They lost the game that round. So I go on ACL Live on Monday, and I said, Landon Crabtree, player to watch out for on Bernie's list, blah, blah, blah. I said I was going to put him on my list, but I fell just a little bit short, kind of like that final bag that landed in front of the board, kind of jabbing at him, you know what I mean? It was fun. It was funny because I'm a hilarious guy. So then Landon Crabtree in the chat says, I hope you have Internet issues all weekend. Hope your Internet doesn't work. Yesterday, the entire day, Internet not working. So I guess karma came back and bit me as Landon gets the last laugh because Internet issues were in full effect yesterday. So now I know not to mess with Landon Crabtree anymore. I'm going to switch my efforts to messing with Landon Ling. Was it the doubles championship? They lost that to Troxel and Trader, right? Yeah. So there we go. So the internet issues are all Landon's fault. He asked for it. He put it out there in the universe. Oh, everything falls. <laughs> Landon was going to take a timeout. Josh wasn't watching. I think he crossed the line. It was that would have been a timeout. Right, good shot right there. Able to get that one to go as he looks down at his feet. <laughs> he looks down at his feet. Everybody looks at Josh. Josh says, nothing wrong with it. We're fine. Everything is fine. There we go. Rondo, you got him. <laughs> He's scrolled all the way up to find out who it was, I bet, didn't you? Appreciate you, Rondo. Let's get him in here. See, Joe, we're doing a good job. Somebody tag Big Ass Cornhole Podcast, too. Let them know. We're enforcing foot fouls from now on. Sean, Dane, Dwayne, get him in here. How did that bag end up three feet on the right side of the board? Holy cow. What did I miss? All right, I'm into this one now, chat. 10 to 8, got my scoreboard, got my chat, got my official. Uh oh missed his landing spot, and that one off the back of the board. Big round here for Justin. Four biggins. 14 to 8. <laughs> Why does everybody look so tired? Everybody looks like they're zoned out, dude. What, what happened last night that I missed? Was there a big party? Like, Waylon's out, man. <laughs> if I had a chance to get a camera on Waylon, you know I would. Kind of wedging right there, see if I, Landon wants to go up and get aggressive to go after this or just kind of play defense the rest of this round. I think he was trying to go with that center lane block. Unable to get it. The nice drip there. 
Justin Lang holding, landing up as that bag is moving. It does fall in. Good call right there. Sebastian getting them MX bags to melt in the hole. Meltdowns, I believe, is what it's called, right? See what I did there? Score updates, Trey Birchfield, Nika Morales, 15, Brandon Earls, and Tim Bohatton, 16. Winner of that match will play the winner of this one here over in the A bracket. We got Justin Burton Jr. and Logan Chamberlain and eliminate Steve Burton, Stephen Bernasette and Philip Lopez Jr. Right now they are down, I'm sorry, never mind, Hunter Thorne and Zach Shibby are up 20 to 19 over Spencer Fabianar and Tony Forbes. Nick misses his landing spot a little bit too far to the left. See him rocking that Missouri Maze hat. Gearing up for ACL teams this year. Twenty to ten now. Landon trying to finish it off right here in this round. and pushing into the pile right now. Trying to set himself up for something big. That one kicked off to the left. I don't necessarily think it's out of play yet for Sebastian. But if it is, Landon Crabtree has an opportunity to win it right here in round 11. At least that one now is on slick side and on the front of the hole. That's an easier collect than the final bag, or the last bag, I'm sorry. He's got one final bag left in his hand to pick it up. Landon wants both these in. He's able to get it. Helps Sebastian out a little bit, but here's the shot that matters. It's not going to work. Too far to the right-hand side. Sliding off the back of the board it goes. Justin Lang and Landon Crabtree take this one down. They advance. Hunter Thorne and Zach Shibby Scheibner against Justin Burton Jr. and Logan Chamberlain right after this.
All right, Chad, welcome back here to court number one in Des Moines, Iowa. Haven't missed anything just yet. Got Josh Keck out there. Get his uh, 15 seconds in, making an announcement that he is going to be watching for the foot fouls. <laughs> oh, my gosh. If you guys... If you guys could read what eye contact between <laughs> Josh Keck and these look like, oh, my gosh. All right, so he's letting them know that he is going to be watching the foot fouls here in this match. <laughs> Hunter Thorne says, i got a boot, man. You have no idea where I'm going to go. <laughs> oh, man. You, ask, you, tell, you tell Justin Burton Jr. and Zach Scheiben over here on the right-hand side, neither one of them really care about what's going to happen. Then over here on the left-hand side, Logan and Hunter are both paranoid as can be on it. <laughs> oh, man. All right, but over during the break, I heard a little congratulation announcement. So it looks like Kyle Hutley and Dawson Cummings have advanced to shootout number one. Spencer Fabianar and Tony Forbes have also advanced to shootout number one. And I think he said something else about the third-place game. Uh, they're playing right now, and I believe the winner of that one will go, if I'm not mistaken. So is that Brandon Earls and Timbo Hatton? I'm not sure. I guess we'll kind of figure out and ask the questions later on. I don't know what's going on, man. All I know is I'm loving every second of it. <laughs> Look what you guys did, Chad. Look what all you foot police did. Now we don't even know how to commentate or play this game anymore. <laughs> what up, Eric? How you doing, man? Tuning in from West Texas. What up, Brandon? Welcome in. He looks exactly the way his name sounds. Who are you talking about? Who, 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 who? Josh Kilk. Is that you talking about? Josh Kilk. He looks exactly how his name sounds. You ain't lying. All right. Well, it looks like I didn't even miss the down and back, so it looks like they're just kind of tossing bags now. So, yeah, we're still going down and back. Haven't missed nothing. All right, chat, I'm going to catch you guys up. What time is it here? 5.30, it looks like. Here are the teams that are left alive. A bracket, Ryan Smith, Ryan Wiedenfeld sitting in the king seat. Fisher Hamilton, Gavin Cano in the loser's bracket final. They will play the winner of this match here. Hunter Thorne, Zach Shibby Scheibner, Justin Burton Jr., and Logan Chamberlain. B bracket, Ryan Windsor, Matthew Creek Killer sitting in the king seat. David Morris and Damon Reynolds in the loser's bracket final. Nico Morales and Trey Birchfield taking on Justin Lang and Landon Crabtree over on court number four. I believe that these bags are live. I see some zeros on the scoreboard now, so hopefully that means that they are legit. What the heck is going on? What up, Josh Bennett? How you doing, man? Just trying to work on my chemistry, you know, during these matches. Logan staying sticky side down right in front of that pile. Josh Keck working and watching at the same time. Looks to not really be affecting anyone just yet. That slick side push into the pile. Justin tell him to hold up. Looks like they're moving. Everything falls. <laughs> and with the board vibration, everything else goes in. So... That was the longest social I've ever seen in my life. Well, we are underway. Oh, scoreboard. Come on, Landon. You had one job. Give me a scoreboard, bro. There we go.
Update you guys over on the Tier 3 Finals. We got Josh King and Brady Fox going to take on Brian Hook and Jeff Hook. That match is being played over on Court 53. And then in the Tier 2 Finals, Brandon Cook and Alan Lamar are taking on Jake Tyler and Gabe Pearson. Good job there for Hunter, kind of cutting around right now. Leaving that bag in place, letting Logan mess around with it. Another cut around. Haven't really seen anything that's been foot foul intense. Kick is keeping a close eye on them as they're throwing the bags. Again, Logan, you kind of see they're complaining about the way the boards are bouncing. It's the first time that Shibby and Hunter have made their way to this court, so let's see if it affects them like it's been affecting all the other players that have been here. Looks like down there from Shibby trying to cut it back around. Do nothing start here for round five. Gonna get a little assistance here, you know. The further we get into these tournaments, I figured need a little bit more assistance. Now that my hair is starting to get a mess. God, and dude, I'm not used to having long hair, bro. I don't I don't know how to do this man bun thing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Josh Keck has stood up. Hey, was that 12 seconds for Hunter? <laughs> all right, so Logan was just – let me turn on your mic. Hold on. I was going to announce you all special, but then just chaos just happened. So. Oh, no, it's fine. Trip Baker, what up, man? Welcome in. What's going on? What's going on? Oh, man, we're – okay, so this is what we got going on right here. You guys can see in the booth, K9, Trip Baker, and Josh Keck right there. We're all kind of watching this match. One of us is watching in particular close. Um, I was going to bring you on to do like a little uh, BG spotlight, man. So I feel like I feel like I deserve you to give you at least your graphic. Let me find that for you real quick. Yeah, man. Uh, there we go. Okay, so after this round, we'll introduce you properly, and then we'll kind of get into it, man. Heck so. yeah. Scoreboard. Yeah, I know. I got it. I got it. Appreciate you, Shereen. So Appreciate you getting bad. me on here. I might be better at doing this stuff than I am at throwing bags. I was going to ask how your day went, man, but I guess that kind of tells the whole story. It didn't go too bad. We we made a uh -oh. decent little run. Zach threw really well. I threw all right. We just ran into some buzz saws. I think first loser's bracket game we had a uh, Phil and Burnus set. So, I mean, mm -hmm. just a tough day. Smaller open, more stacked field, man. It was tough. Yeah, that's a harder tilt right there for Zach Shibby Scheibner. Takes in Justin Burton Jr.'s bag. Let's see if he can collect this one. He has a hard right to left tilt. So, I'm wondering. So he's stepping out, going for it here. I wonder if just maybe put him with his arm on the outside of the board. But then again, where is he comfortable with? Oh, no. <laughs> One of them went in. This could be a wash still. Yeah, I haven't played with Hunter yet, but I think I want to. Like Hunter is the right attitude for me yep. to play with. All right, let's do this properly, though. Here we go. Let's bring on our BG player spotlight. Uh, go ahead and bring in here Trip <laughs> Baker. Trip, how you doing, brother? Welcome in, man. Not too bad. Not too bad. There he is. There's your moment. 
<laughs> All right, so <laughs> that's cool. The reason I wanted to bring you on here, man, is because I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the uh, BG bag arsenal yep. and see what you guys are throwing. And uh, I don't know what I believe Hunter and Shibby are throwing the Wizards. Yep, they are. It looks like they're both throwing Wizards. Yeah, anytime we get a little BG on BG crime, it's always nice to get a little outsider information. But so are you and Zach pretty much strictly throwing one set, or do you guys mix and match? Between the whole line of BG bags? We mix and match a little bit with our bags being a little newer, uh, still getting them broken, slowed down. So we're still throwing last year's models until our newer sets get slowed down. But right now we're switching between mercenaries and wizards. Um, once those wizard L's get slowed down, that'll probably be what we throw majority of the time. Those are feeling pretty good. Again, just got to get them slowed down. But Okay, and I'm kind of new to this. I mean, we, we talked briefly in the offseason, Rich and I did, but the BG Wizard L is basically a lighter version. Wizard yep. Phil, is that correct? Yep, just slightly lighter, I think, than the normal set, so maybe feels a little thinner in the hand. Um, myself, I, I don't have the flattest bag in the world, so kind of helps reduce the kick just a little bit, um, which is nice for me. Still allows me to do everything I want to do with the bag, too, so um, I think they came out really, really good. Uh, I was excited when I saw saw that what they were being made when they got sent they felt really good so yeah i'm excited to throw those now this year for those of you that don't know in the chat you are allowed to have different weighted bags so do you know anyone that's actually throwing like different weighted bags i don't yet no gosh i don't know to me i feel like that'd be a like a I don't know. It wouldn't even be an advantage for me. I'd right. Like it'd be to worse. me, it would just be more of a mental thing. I don't. I, I'd get in my head about it if I missed the, missed my heavier bag that I wanted to block or something, or missed my lighter bag I wanted to block. Then heavier bags meant to put. I don't know. I'd put myself in bad spots with it. I can't even. I can't even figure out the ones where they're all the same weight. So. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys were kind of paying attention to the feet right there. Josh Keck definitely paying attention to the feet. Should be. Steps over the line, but he does keep his back foot planted, which is a legal throw. During this match, Logan Chamberlain has already been issued one warning. Trip, do you have any issue with the stepping over the line or any nope, rules I don't think or anything so. like that? No, nope. you, you especially understand with, it. Agree to it? What? Uh, I, I honestly don't understand it. I've never really struggled too bad with it, as far as I'm aware of. But I really don't mind it, especially if Josh is over here calling it. I think the rule's going to be in place. We got to call it. Got to enforce it because then it creates a whole bunch of controversy in terms of i don't know people people getting away with it or whatnot i'd either have no rule in place and just feed her behind the line when you release the bag it is what it is or <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna enforce it have the rule in place i like that josh is over here enforcing it so uh, i don't know if this is actually logan or not but logan chamberlain in the chat says good job keck way to catch him Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. It, I didn't catch him pick up the phone, but if he did, that is hilarious. <laughs> it was the win. All right. What up, Edward? How you doing? Josh, are you watching? <laughs> did he go to his phone? Oh my gosh, that's great. <laughs> Oh, man. This is going to be a fun season, man. It's open number two. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of wanted to call you over here and kind of talk about the BG lineup. I know that we got the shapeshifters. I don't think I've seen a single pro throw the shapeshifters. I know a lot of the people that throw BG bags like to kind of uh, do a little bit more rolling, cutting, yep. stuff like that. Not exactly the shapeshifter arsenal. Is there any other bag that you can think of that BG has that's a really good bag that most people won't see really at the pro division that maybe they should try out in their local leagues if they like it? Uh, I'd probably say both the Samurais and Witchers. Um, both of them play really well. Those Samurais can get really, really sticky. And uh, if you like throwing the bag hard, that's definitely a fun bag to mess around with. Um, Witchers, too. I actually got a set of Witchers just in case I wanted to go to a slide bag. It's kind of like a, got a smaller template, kind of like what you'd see with a Viking, but allows you to slide. It's a I don't know. It's like a five to six on the slow side, and nine on the fast. It. I really like the way it plays. So, um, I don't know. I saw Elizabeth Tennyson order get some sets of Witchers. She might have got a set of Shapeshifters too. So, oh, that's not, who knows? Yeah. We maybe with her and Cassidy, we might even see some Shapeshifters. Actually, you know what? I didn't division. think about that, but I would like to see them throw the Shapeshifters with their yeah. style of play. I think yep. that'd be a good bag for them. I agree. Uh, as far as the Witchers go, Ryan Smith and Ryan Wiedenfeld are throwing the Witchers today. That's they are right. in the king seat in the A bracket. Those guys just tear it up. Shibby with a hard bike. Keeps that foot planted. Does not cross over. Sorry. It amazes me how 
diverse Ryan Wienfeld's like bag selection is, I guess he just throws the Witcher so well in doubles with Ryan because that's what Ryan Smith prefers to throw. But then he can go and just tear up the field with Wizards as well in singles. It's, a, it's harder said than done, or easier said than done, and uh, <laughs> Wienfeld does it well. I could not see Hunter Thorne hop out of his chair fast enough to tell Shibby to bar soap this as that bag is stacked three high. Basically harder. a little pyramid shape on the right side of the hole. It's a harder push. Josh Keck watching this foot foul. I'll say this Pretty is where close. that foot foul comes into play. Kept the back foot planted oh, and hits it. Gets what a it. shot. All right, Zach let's see how Shibner. good I am at my replay as Shibby's able to get that wow. one across. Nicely done. Let's take a look at it one more again. Shibby, low line drive toss. <laughs> Keck said he's watching it. Shibby says, yeah, it was definitely in my head to not step over the line. He's able to get it. He said, I still got my warning here. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> now they're talking about a 45 second in between rounds. Oh my gosh, dude. I cannot, I cannot uh, contain myself with this season. We're going to have some fun chat. I'm going to have to hold the fireballs off till the end. <laughs> Josh Keck's going to have his hands full this year with the old enforcing the rules. I think by the time we get to the first national, it'll be in full effect, which is kind of what we want anyway. We don't yeah. really have any broadcasts until the pro season starts. Yep. So the way it's going to work this season, guys, and Trip, I'm not sure if you even know yet, but basically we're going to have a national and a shootout every other week. So the pro season's basically going to be eight, eight weeks long. The shootouts are going to count towards the pro standings this year. Um, you also have the pro teams events and stuff like that. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I believe what they call in Australia as unfortunate, as I have to work on my Australian wow. terminology, Hunter Thorne celebrates Logan's mistake there. Somehow, those bags don't fall in. The score is going to be 12 to 8. I'll get you guys a scoreboard back That's right there. That's a bad we break go. right there. That's unfortunate. But, yeah, so I know your partner was one of these guys, Fisher Hamilton, another one that loved throwing the mercenaries. Yeah. Yep. Is that a little bit faster and a little bit stickier? Is that right? Than the Vikings? And is there like a combination? Yeah. The only difference between the Mercenaries and the Vikings, I think, is that the Mercenaries offer a quicker fast side. So uh, it's the same fast side that you see on the Wizard. Um, and I'm not sure what it is, but the the Mercenaries tend to, in my opinion, be a little bit bouncier than the Vikings. Okay. And I don't know if the fast yeah, that, side has anything to do with that or if it's a different fill. I'm not so really sure. that plays sure, into Fisher's strengths. He's hitting a yeah. lot of pop off of yeah. his Mercs when he throws them. I love the Mercenaries. That's what Zach and I threw today, and we both threw them all right. Um, Somebody said need to bring the Warlocks back. Owen Wright wants the Warlocks back. And really? That's what Ryan uh, Smith threw a couple years yeah. ago in Tiverton. Real good with them. I've never thrown them, I don't think. Yeah, those are interesting. I think they were a wizard slow Oof. side with a Viking fast side, so kind of a sl slower bag that offered, I don't know. It's an interesting bag. I never got the chance to throw them, honestly, so I wouldn't know much about them other than the speeds and the materials. I want all fast bag, flat fill, call it the K9s. The BG K9s. Rich, make it happen. It's a small window hit by Justin Burton Jr. That's a good shot. I believe that's only for a wash. I'm not going to lie. As chaotic as this match has been, to see it only being 12-8 to 8 on the scoreboard is kind of uh -huh. tricky. So the winner of this match will take on Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano. So it looks like we're pretty much getting BG all the way, no matter what, out of the A bracket here. In the B bracket, I'm sorry, this is uh, bracket two, tier two. We got uh, Jake Tyler and Gabe Pearson in game two, up 9 nothing over Brandon Cook and Alan Lamar. So Gabe Pearson from Pro Podium Pro Apparel putting in some work today. Tier three done with. Josh King, Brady Fox, able to hold off Brian and Jeff Hook. So congratulations to Josh King and Brady Fox taking down the Tier 3 championships. And then checking in on the B bracket, Justin Lang and Landon Crabtree up 11-7 over Trey Birchfield wow. and Nico Morales. Really impressive run from David Morse and Damon Reynolds today. Wasn't really sure what to expect out of those two. Um, definitely showing a lot of upside this year. They, they've had some big wins today. I had middle-tier expectations for them. I thought they'd finish right in the middle of the pack, but I was definitely impressed with their performance today. I tried twice to get them on the live feeds, and it just did not work out. So Looks like David yeah. Morse got rid of his step in his bag. Just okay. looks a whole lot flatter than what it was last year. I mean, he, he made it work last year, obviously. He and uh, Ethan Walker had a good year, but had a more wobbly bag with those kill shots. And this year, taking out the step, his bag looks really, really flat. And, of course... Damon Reynolds throws a really pretty bag. I get to play against him a lot in the Kansas City area, and he's always had a really good-looking bag. I'm excited to watch him this year. He's going to tear it up. 
I've really enjoyed the interaction between Zach Shivner and Hunter Thorn all day. I've gotten to watch some of their matches earlier in the day, and they both kind of throw sarcastic little shots at each other, keep it fun, keep it lighthearted. It's actually kind of crazy because if you look at their partners this season, you got Hunter Thorn with Jacob Gore. Yep. And then you got um, Shibby throwing with Gage Landis. And they're both like the funnier, more loose version yep. of that teammate. No doubt. So them pairing up together is, is actually kind of fun. It makes sense. I, I'm with you. I agree. I like watching it. I feel like Justin Burton Jr. and Logan Chamberlain are not going to be happy if we come back to this uh, <laughs> place next year. They're just not getting any love. Whatever <laughs> cornhole gods may be in attendance, they are not in JBJ and Logan Chamberlain's hands. They are trying to run it back from open number one championship, but right now just kind of on the struggle bus. Yes, yeah, so by the way, if you want to hop out at any time, and I'm not trying to keep you hostage, I just wanted to no, you're, no, you're good. Heck do yeah. a little BG player spotlight. I know we, we talked a little bit about uh, you replacing Jake Brandon because Jake Brandon's really not that great at this. <laughs> you're a lot better, um, but then you end, up, you end up getting your pro card, so then um, we... Uh, decided to go oh jake what's up man hope you're in the chat hope you're having a good time jake <laughs> oh yes dude That's oh hilarious. that is awkward timing man Whoa. oh man <laughs> that's that's the sound bar ready that's, that's hilarious uncomfortable when that happens no, i love jake man he's gonna be running open number five heck yeah with allison that's gonna be fun um in case you guys aren't aware yet we are kind of searching for commentators throughout the season um, Trip, I would offer you a position at one of these nationals because obviously you do a phenomenal job, man. But I hope you have a deep run at the yeah, nationals. Yeah, hopefully I'm so. in a spot where I can't <laughs> commentate. Yeah, and I know we're going to test some things out. I think I have things lined up for open number three in Tiverton and then open number four. We're going to test a couple people out. hope you guys enjoy who I pick. If not, do me a favor, send me a message. Let me know um, that I went the wrong direction or the right direction. Either way. I got to meet Jake at the uh, college series this year in Myrtle Beach. He and uh, him and Zach Owings played together in doubles, and Jake made it in singles as well. Him and Zach, both great guys. <laughs> Whoa, Jake, coming in hot in the chat. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> oh, man. Cage Land is in the chat. So, Jake Gore, our partners are cooking. You ain't lying. 17 to 8 right here, making a deep run in Des Moines. Cage Landis, that's my teammate right there. I Pennsylvania I Ringers, baby. Okay. Let's go. I invited. Uh, Jake to come out and help me commentate. He is unfortunately a couple of hours away. Otherwise, he'd be here with me on the mic. What's he doing? Where's he at? He's doing the college tour, man. That's kind of cool what they're doing. Traveling the country with these college games. Yeah, that is cool. We're uh, My uh, college partner and I, uh, we didn't end up playing doubles in Myrtle, but we were going to check out the one in uh, Norman. It was like the Red River shootout or something. They were doing a college tour, but I don't think it ended up happening last year. Uh, so we, I just ended up making the trip for singles. And I say this with no disrespect to Zach and Hunter, but this is not the score I was expecting. I figured it'd be a close game, or if it was going to be a blowout either way, it'd be in favor of JBJ and Logan. They're Airmail deep. And that's going to put them on 20. Mm -hmm. Striking yeah. distance now. I'm telling you, man, everybody's going to walk out there and buy themselves a boot. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Hunter Thorne's got that thing working for him. It's, uh, I mean, if you're not if you're friends with Shibby on Facebook, you know Shibby's probably gotten hacked, and yeah. one of the people on his account is selling a boot by now. I can't tell you how many times I've been offered to buy. Selling a boot or crypto or yeah, something. Cr crypto, <laughs> washing machines or something from Shibby's Facebook accounts. That's funny. Who's doing Tiverton? We got Chase Hunter is doing the broadcast from Tiverton. <laughs> love you guys, kind of. Oh, come on, Jake. I love you, buddy. <laughs> I need to go to the Canadian Open. No idea when it is. Not sure if I'll have time for it. University of Iowa this weekend if I had a card. Opportunity to our drive. for Logan to score here and does. Nice collect. Oh, Josh Bennett says we're making boots as we speak. Let's go. Let's go. Throw a canine logo on there. I got you, bro. Cornell Chemistry getting it done. Shout out Cornell Chemistry. Oh, man, he didn't pay for that. Josh and Tab Bennett. He gave him free plugs. <laughs> My bad. My bad. They're that's, supporting me this year. I had to. Had to throw it in there. That's like saying Big Chiefs Cornhole. <laughs> All right, you got your one free one, Josh. Hope you're happy. That's Trip Baker, by the way. You no, know I do anything for you, Josh. He and expects tab. his raise in the mail, his little bonus per <laughs> announcement. Airmail, there, there is the go. hit. There he is. JBJ feeling like he's got to make something happen, not necessarily a 
I don't know if he would have shot that had he been down this much. Figure down this much. Might as well try it. That's a good bag by Zach there. Slick side. And then with Zach's hard cut, you never know. That bag yeah. on the right-hand side yep. should still be in play with his hard tilt. Good job by good JBJ block. taking that one away. Does he roll or go up here? I want to roll. I want to hop right here. Back tilt. Looks like you get what you want. Mm. Oh. Might still be in play with a step out. Again, that cut makes things yeah, interesting. So he's got that weird angle at it. He's going to have to hit it right. It's a good bag by JBJ. Gosh, I, I can't believe he doesn't go to that bag less. With as good of a mm -hmm. roll he has, but then again, with an airmail as good as he has, why wouldn't you just shoot it? Good shot There's by There's the Zach bounce there. we wanted last time. When I first saw Justin Burton play, it was at the Open in Topeka. No, 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 Topeka Olathe two years ago. And... Uh, I didn't even see him shoot that much. He was throwing warlocks. <laughs> That's the thing I was talking about. I talk about this all the time. I, I was playing with Matt Ryan's uh, girlfriend at the time. Yep. Actually, fiance or wife? Now I can't keep track. I think fiance. This is our first time ever playing in a tournament. She's never played before. I said, I'll play with you. I'm commentating. I can't really do much. Mm -hmm. uh, so we went and played, and I played Justin Burton Jr. and his dad. And I want to say they were throwing like some type of cornel scenario or okay. some type of faster bag. And I saw JBJ play, and I really wasn't impressed by it. I didn't know anything about him uh -huh. going into that. So, obviously, he's a sticky bag thrower. But then he w made a deep run in that tournament. I think he got second. I second think he lost to Alex. Second place only to Alex Hicks. And everyone in the chat was like, you're going to learn about Justin Burton Jr., yep. hater, blah, 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 blah. I was like, dude, I'm, I'm sponsoring Ryan Wiedenfeld. I'm rooting for Ryan Wiedenfeld. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I don't care. And then uh, Justin Burton Jr. got on my radar there, yep. and he was throwing an entirely different bag in singles. And I was like, okay, this makes a lot more sense as to who this guy is because I was able to see him do these different shots with it. And then last year just kind of elevated his game to an entirely new level. It was just remarkable how yeah. quickly he got his game to that point. And uh, it's very impressive. Did he win Rookie of the Year? Oh, man. Uh, was it him or Fisher Hamilton? I think it was Justin. I think I gave the award yeah, to Justin. I think, I think so. I announced that award. I'm not sure. Yeah, I uh, my first time seeing him, he played against Jordan Power, and I can't remember what the reason was, but Jordan Power had a lot of hype going into that event, uh, the, two, the Olathe Open. And There's the bounce. That's the right time to do it. This could be it. Justin just uh, gave him no chances. I mean, just mm -hmm. didn't miss. And he was actually throwing BG Warlocks. It's funny we just talked about him, but, yeah, he put a hurting on JP with the with the Warlocks. Logan trying to help Justin set himself up to, to get around this. this. Leave the blocker. Oh, good shot. It's not terrible. I mean, he had to clean up one of them. I Shimner think got two more bags to close this thing out. There's one. I think you got to go after it, don't Probably, you? Probably. I would think so. He's not. Oh, he's just going in, counting on a miss. Shimner. Earbuds come back out, for though. Game. And he sinks Whoa, it. Whoa, that one looked it. like it was going to stop, but it goes in. And look at this. All right. So there we go. Give you guys an update. We got, uh, looks like Justin Ling and Landon Crabtree advanced. They're going to take on wow. David Morris and Damon Reynolds over there on court number four. Big win for those two. That's a good win. Shibby and Hunter advanced. They're going to take on Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Kana. We're down to the final three teams here in the A bracket. Trip, if you want to stay, you can stay. If you want to go, right. I definitely don't mind you going. Appreciate but you having me on. <laughs> there's Hunter getting some quick TV time. We'll take a quick <laughs> break, chat. Be right back right after this.
Chad, welcome back in here to court number one in Des Moines, Iowa. Just had a chance to get some good news chat. There she is. There she is. Turn around and say hi to everybody. Too late. You're already on there. Ladies and gentlemen, Tristan Massey is okay for those of you that were worried. Tristan had an emergency run to the hospital, had some kidney stones at the wrong time. But luckily, everything turned out to be okay. There was a scare for a second. We thought it was appendicitis. But looks like she's good to go. As you can see, sitting next to me, we got uh, Brooks from Seba. What up, my dude? What's happening? What's happening? Oh, man, you know, just cheering on your dude and my dude and this other dude and another dude throwing on together dudes. A whole bunch of dudes. A whole bunch of dudes. I'll tell you what, man, it makes me feel like I picked the right people. Hunter Thorne, Gavin Cano, Ryan Wiedenfeld. I'm guaranteed at least one person here in the bracket finals in the A division. Over in the B bracket, though, not so much. David Morrison, Damon Reynolds, 6-3 to three right now over Justin Ling and Landon Crabtree, Ryan Windsor, and Matthew Creekiller waiting for the winner of that one. We're down to the final six teams. Obviously, should be one of your dudes. Gage Landis was in the chat earlier. Josh Keck trying to get a matching phone. <laughs> trying, to get that, trying to get that white line on the bottom of his phone there. <laughs> what up, Bella? Welcome in. Um, it's now Big Chief Athletics. Let's get, all right. Apologize for the fake shout out, man. I wasn't even trying to give you guys yeah. a shout. I'm just kidding. For the Big Chiefs. Just kidding. Gage Landis says, "Who throws Siva bags?" Should he throw Siva bags? You think they should be allowed to throw like BG down one way and then Siva back the other way? That'd be interesting uh, addition to the sport. I think you should be able to switch it out like golf clubs and bowling balls and whatever else you want to do in between rounds. You know what I mean? Right. I really like the rule the rule that they propose about uh, one bag change in, in the middle of the round. So well, I don't, want, I don't even want just one bag change, man. I want it to be you're allowed to bring whatever. I think I almost caught that fly. You see that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I was worried about it getting in my beer. I almost caught it in midair. Anyway, uh, yeah, if you could switch a bag like per round or something like that if you want to throw a fast bag or like a change up or something like that i i do think that would be, be cool. probably the ideal mixing of bags if, if you were able to bring you know say eight mm -hmm. eight different bags and you're only allowed to throw four of them but for each shot you have a whole arsenal of bags that you could choose from well i think it would help out with the bag manufacturers because you guys they would all have to be the same pattern you'd have to mm -hmm. have the same print on it you guys can either sell them individually or like two packs or something like that. Um, but I think it'll help you guys with the sales. I think it'll help the players get the the you know whole arsenal of the lineup that you guys offer, and I think it'll also help the game add a little bit more strategic approach to it. Right. Or even offer the different series with the same color. Yep. Same patterns. Same That's pretty look. much what we've been doing with all my collab releases. We got a collab right now with Sub Zero, and they. Uh, they're offered in every single line. So if you have a specific bag that you like, you can pick your pattern that you want, your design, and put it with whatever. I'm excited about, I'm excited for April. Oh, yeah, April's going to be awesome, man. We're going to have some Siva collab, funky canine. smelling bags. Mm -hmm. Nice fat sack. Yeah, I, I feel like Melissa is just going to knock that design out of the park unless you have someone in, in mind. I mean, we could probably offer uh, the AI services everybody else is doing right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I mean. I oh. do most of our design work. We reached out to a couple different people um, for some of our designs, but most of it, most of it's done by me. Yep. I I accept any help and assistance we can in that department. It does get overwhelming. Yeah, well, I definitely offer <laughs> like it's my work. <laughs> Melissa St. John from Onboard Apparel, highly recommended. Love her. She the best. Yeah, if there's any uh, any designers out there looking to get their artwork on some bags, they're more than happy yeah. to reach out. We're uh, always looking for help with new designers, new new ideas, new artwork. And they could reach out to you how? Uh, Siva at SivaCornhole.com. There you go. Siva Cornhole on Facebook. Siva Cornhole on Instagram. Oh. Looks like I didn't have enough on it to go. I don't know if the pacing has just picked up or if it's just me, but I feel like I feel like these guys are all just slinging the bags faster right. than it's normal. Like and I don't really think Fisher and Gavin are speeding the game up. I just almost feel like they just looked at the bracket for the first time and they realized they're almost at the end. And they're like, oh, we still got time for dinner plans. Right. Right. What? 
just an hour ago it was like everybody was zombies walking around here you know well it could be hunter thorne over here on the left hand side scared now that he saw Kristen massey make her way <laughs> back right, in yeah. she's back back yeah. full force watch your full watch force. your right ankle there hunter <laughs> i'm gonna get this fly dude yeah need some uh chopsticks mr miyagi and a thumbtack <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I did not expect this out of David Morrison. Damon Reynolds, 10-7 to 7 right now over Justin Ling and Landon Crabtree, trying to get back to the championship match against Windsor and Creek Killer. Those are another couple guys Ooh. that I think have a, a fairly high ceiling if they can get, yeah. get rolling together. Zach's not happy. With, oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. I was just going to say, and I'm glad I didn't get a chance to get it out the rest of the way, but... I was going to say, Zach not happy with the way that bag is placed, but it's going to be pretty hard for Fisher to go in without taking that bag with him. And let's take a look at this. I don't understand how he was able to get that bag in there. Just the right amount of speed, stops oh. short, trips it in. On the slick slide, that's, that's wow. just so much control to be able to do that on the slick side of the bag. Ridiculous. No Wooten, Pedro Sasueta, Damon Dennis all checking in. What up, guys? Welcome in. Down to the final six teams here in the doubles division. Hey, did you have a chance to uh, hear what Landon Crabtree said? No, I did not. Okay, so during our show ACL Live, we figured out what the issue was this week with the Internet. So Landon Crabtree was one of Bernie's players to watch, mm -hmm. and I said I wasn't going to put him on my list, but... You know, he came a little bit short, just like that final bag he threw in the doubles championship <laughs> in the Midwest Conference. I took a jab at him. So then Landon Crabtree was in the chat and says, I hope you have internet issues all oh, weekend. that's what it yeah. was. He put, the he put it out there, man. He put the jinx on him. Yeah, so that was all his fault. I always thought there was something funny about him with his reverse spin bag. I mean, <laughs> he he's can, got a little voodoo in he him. He does, man. He's a That's a great guy to watch play, too. I mean, I, I would always put him on my players to watch list. Definitely fun. How, how dare you leave a monster list? Well, I, I realized. I said, all right, man, truce. We're done. We're done. We're not putting it out there anymore. BJ Turner checking in. Uh-oh. Oh, oh BJ's in. Here we go. Bring out I the was, French fries. I was about to spill some beans about some upcoming stuff. I better check with BJ, see if I can make an announcement on here. Yeah, that's what you got a microphone for, man. You can say whatever <laughs> you want. Well, there's a lane here for Zach. If he could hit this shot, they could be right back into this game. Slick side down, hard tilt as usual. Gets one to fall. The other one slick side in front of the hole. That one on the edge could go. Wow, roll attempt. Not much room there at all. Dude, that bar is be hitting the last game. It's pretty nasty. Let's see if you can collect this here. Fisher doesn't need much room though for these roll shots. It's ridiculous. There nice it is. Shot. There's the push. Way. Nicely done. All right, really I'm going to try working. something I haven't done yet. Let me see if I get both shots in here. All right, go back to 100% speed. Good roll attempt here from Fisher. It's going to play the next replay, right? Okay, never mind. Uh, failed, failed, failed. Good shot, though, by Shivy to collect everything else. Good hop out of Hunter's bag. Yeah, for all those uh, SIVA fans that are out there listening, we are coming out with a herringbone bag rather quickly. It's called the K9s? Well, not, we do not have a name on it yet. Well, I got a suggestion. I'll tell you later <laughs> off the air. All right. Mm. Is it K9? Bar of soap. Well, I don't want to give it away. <laughs> Bar of soap. Bar Ooh. If that would have crossed the line, that might have counted as a throw. <laughs> Josh was watching. I'm pretty sure. All right, let's go. I got this replay stored. Let's go ahead and watch it real quick from Shibby with this collect. That Nicely so done nice. getting that one. I'm going to ask Keck on that, actually, because I'm pretty sure that's a rule that came into play. Josh, that bag crosses the line. Is that a throw? If it crosses the line. Okay. So then that clarifies the whole walking down with your bag in hand thing. 
if you drop it, it doesn't count because he called a timeout before. But if he drops it on the board and it hits bags, <laughs> can't tell you what he said. Can't tell you what he said there, Chad. Just don't do it, all right? Just don't, <laughs> just don't walk down with your back, big hit. Don't bleep and do it. It's easier to set it down gently, that I think, a, is what he said. That was a nice little airmail there, D. Finish out the rail. All right, so 10 to 8 here, eight rounds in. A bracket loser final. Winner of this one will go to the finals to take on the Ryans, Smith and Wiedenfeld. Looks like Tier 2 championship is over. Jake Tyler and Gabe Pearson able to pull off the double dip. Way to pull that one off. Those. Podium Pro Apparel takes down the podium. How do you like that? And then if you're just tuning in, Josh King and Brady Fox take down your Tier 3 championship as well. Good they, collect there from that's Fisher. The elite players that qualified for the shootout doubles. I heard two of them. I don't know if there's another one. There's uh, Spencer Fabinar and Tony Forbes, Kyle Hutley, and Dawson Cummings. So it's one of these things. You take Jaden Ellis and Carson Getty. You know, Jaden Ellis, if he would have had a deep run with Carson, I don't think he could have qualified via doubles, could he? No, because he, you both have to be elite. You can't partner with a pro. Okay. From my understanding. Nice job getting sneaky there from Hunter. I thought Same that would thing throw, from Gavin. I thought that would throw a bit of the wrench in the plans of pros when their partner can't make it to an open and they're looking for a, mm -hmm. another player. It kind of takes those elite players off the table a little bit if they're trying to make it to these shootouts. You know? I think it was kind of cool, though, make those announcements, give them their recognition here in the building. I thought whenever I heard the first couple going, that was pretty cool. I know Kelly Karanovich got her announcement as well. Um, who was the junior? Do they make they take a junior too, right? Yeah, they did take junior. I don't, I don't remember who it was, and I couldn't remember who. And they took a senior too. Had to have been Tony Forbes because Tony Forbes played in the finals. And we'll get Keck on after this match. We'll make an announcement. I'm sure he's got a spreadsheet with all this information on it. Seniors, I'm trying to think. It was Donald Cup, Steve Schrader, Dan Schulten, I think. I don't think Dan's a pro this year. I can't keep track of all these rule changes. All you got to do is follow along with ATC on Facebook, and we'll have all the rule changes and all the people that are breaking them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Little, little adrenaline hop there in the last bag. 16-8 here. Gage says, Brooks, Richmond, VA is my 21st weekend. Uh-oh. 21st Howdy birthday time. weekend. 21. Gage Landis is going to get to that bracket final like a joke. <laughs> D-stand on the national number one last year. <laughs> nice collect. Apologizing down, but this is a nice collect here from Hunter. Able to get that one to go. That Richmond yeah. venue is a really Fish nice. going to throw his bag. We're going to get a timeout. Caden Allen checking in. What up, Caden? No idea what Hunter and Fisher or Hunter and Shibby are talking about now. <laughs> there it is. Hey, it ain't over. 
So whatever they were talking about, looks like they're on the same page now. Oh, man. You know there's, like, moments that just hit your heart and, like, hurt, dude? Just got a message from the kiddo. Said, I'm going to the Blues game tonight. It's my first time going to a game without you. Oh, like, that made me sad, man. That is, that's a rough one. Putting in my two-week notice. I want to go to a hockey game with my kiddo. Uh, Matt says, Wally, did Katie bring you a gift for me? Uh, no, not at all. Nope, I need one right now, actually. I'll tell her to send her a message and tell her to bring me another one. <laughs> I mean, if there was a gift for me. Nah, she brought me on. I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. It was a good boost of energy, if you know what I mean. It was fire. <laughs> as they say. It's exciting. Whoa, dead spot. <laughs> uh oh, is he getting a warning? I think he's getting a warning. There it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a warning. <laughs> he said, "I got a warning for missing." Watch a cornhole match, and all you're doing is looking at players' feet all day. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Athena says, I don't even know who won the game whenever she was talking to Brock. I was staring at her feet the whole time. <laughs> uh. Oh. Trash of the bar, so this is off to the right. 15 16. We're going to work it right back in after two frames. It was a good, good time timeout, it looks like. Yeah, every now and then you should uh, violate the rule, I guess. You have to take the scoreboard for you guys. <laughs> well, the warning has been issued, though, so we'll see if somebody actually violates the rule after the warning, if it comes into factor or, or not. What is the rule? Hunter yelling down to Shibby right now. Say, so, hey, don't let it get in your head. Come on, Which relax. A dead, a dead bag? Is that the Dead rule? bag, and I believe it. if it hits the pile, they got to reset it. I'm not 100% sure on that. I mean, part of me, I'm not going to lie. Like, it's like when you watch a wreck in NASCAR, you kind of want to see it happen <laughs> just to kind of see what happens afterwards. Yeah, I think, the, I think the rule has definitely gotten into Shibby's head now that he has his warning. Fisher able to drive through that one. Gavin's first shot is in. Hunter's got a little teaser. And that's exactly what I expect out of players at Gavin's level. Force Hunter to make the difficult shots, and he's not going to do it there on the first attempt at it. Slick side into the pile. Gavin wants the bunch. And that's pretty much going to do it. This is going to be an impossible shot to grab everything. One more slick side push into the pile to make it more difficult. There's a little bit of life. I don't know if he can. If he gets the first one, oh, never mind. Trying to one, <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> say, if he throws it high enough, he might right. be able to get that first one to grab the second one to go along with it. Correct. That's what I was thinking, too. But it did not happen. We'll take a commercial break, chat. When we come back, bracket finals here in Des Moines, Iowa. Be right back right after this.
All right, chat, what up? Welcome back in. All right, so if you guys want an insight of what we're talking about here, we've got K9's fashion statement here. This is, Bro this is Brooke's idea. I feel like a, I feel like a horde, like a racing, uh, a show pony or whatever, you know? I mean, you got to get in the music. All right, chat, so what's going on right now is we are going to switch over to the B bracket. You got Ryan Windsor and Matthew Creekiller have made their way here to the court in Des Moines, Iowa. Championship match set here for the B bracket on one side. And on the other side, we're trying to figure out who they're going to play. Justin Lang and Landon Crabtree or David Morris and Damon Reynolds. Again, kind of tried three times to get David and uh, Damon here on the court. Ryan Smith and Ryan Wiedenfeld going to go play Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano on court number three. I was going to make a suggestion saying I think we got enough time to play them both here. But uh, the more I think about it, all the other tiers are finished. So we don't really have time to get these matches and hold anything else up. So once this is done, chat, we're going to go and singles action tomorrow. Let's see if I can play you guys some music and let you kind of jam out while we're waiting for our next opponent. No, nope, that's not working. Try it again. There we go. That match is 23 rounds in right now, 1917. Josh Keck issuing the warnings ahead of time. Creek Killer doing some test runs. Now he's going to walk down and tell Windsor. Windsor was one of these players last year. Oh, you can have your headphones. I'm talking to you. So, yeah, Brooks, that's about my entire life right there. What do you think? <laughs> uh, can you start from the beginning? Go ahead and put the headphones back on. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, what, uh, Ultra? Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Because I know you'll look over and be like, I need another beer. I, I was half doing it to heckle and half doing it because I wanted another drink. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, that's what happens to get popular. No, but I was more heckling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really does. So last year, if you look back at Ryan Windsor's throw, Ryan Windsor doesn't really cross the line to like the point where it affects the player or anything like that. It doesn't come across center board. But Ryan Windsor would always kind of throw and barely step over. Like his attempt to throw, he would land like right there on the black. Let's see if he does it here. No step Doesn't at even all. move at all now. I was thinking the most interesting one with the new throw was, I was thinking Frank Milan. Frank Milan last year had that, just that small mm -hmm. baby step over top of the line. Yeah. Uh, what we got here? Get that playlist ready for the Battle of the Queens. Absolutely. I can't wait for that. Come on, Wally, entertain. I mean, what else do I got to do here, man? I mean, I got a, I got a unicorn ponytail <laughs> thing going on here. You guys want to see me do some push-ups? Music is echoing? Yeah, probably. Uh, is someone going live for the Fisher-Gavin game? I would hope Gavin's going live. He's a K9 sponsored player. He should be going live on K9 Unit for subscribers, but same thing with Ryan Wiedenfeld, but I very much doubt they are. I'll see if Elizabeth can go live. It looks like the game just ended, and it uh, looks like Justin Lang and Landon Crabtree Took that one down over top of. No oh, man. David and Damon. My phone is acting up. That's awesome. Might be that white line. 
right? I'm just glad we were able to clear the curse. But now Landon is going to be on the live stream. <laughs> what type of curse does he want? We're not even going to cover Landon's <laughs> match. Sorry, Chet. <laughs> We're just going to go ahead and ignore everything. We're actually going to black out. There's going to be a big black square <laughs> right over where Landon's throwing from. But, all right, so we got our opponents set. Ryan Windsor and Matthew Creekler are going to take on Justin Lang and Landon Crabtree. We're going to take a break, chat. I'm going to try and get something set up for that match over there on the other side. Be right back right after this. Good old Saturday morning cartoons, man. All right, Chad, what up? Welcome back here to the championship court brought to you by Rise Fuel Energy Drinks. Who's going to rise above the rest as we have our final matches set? Ryan Windsor, Matthew Creekiller here on court number one against Justin Lang and Landon Crabtree. Justin and Landon will have to pull off the double dip. Ryan Smith and Ryan Wiedenfeld will take on Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano. This is a pairing that could have happened. If Justin Lang would have won the last chance qualifier instead, okay. Damon Reynolds was able to take that one down. So interesting that Damon Reynolds and Justin Lang had to play against each other to get to this point. Uh, I did have word that Ryan Smith, I believe, is live for that match over on the other side, as well as Elizabeth Tennyson. So um, if you guys are a subscriber, you should be able to see that on K9 page. Um, I'm not sure where exactly Ryan is live at. But here we go. This should be fun. Should be a pretty good one. Ryan Windsor He's was doing some practice tosses beforehand. You can kind of see what I was talking about there. He's not crossing a line or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. But you see when he has his release, he doesn't keep his feet still. So whenever he's doing that little sidestep last year, that little sidestep would cross over the black line, which would be a violation according to the new rule. He's a player just like Ryan Trader who has done a good job of making the adjustments to get himself in position to make sure that his feet stay locked and ready where they need to go without do, violating any rules. I do believe it adds a little bit of pressure on mental when you have the official at the court. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, just the presence of them. That Hunter Thorne guy is dog water. Oh, man. Let's go. Appreciate you, my dude. West Texas Outlaw Cornhole coming in with a nice patch. It's kind of cute looking. Nice kind of cute. That's hard to get them bullets in there. That's good work. That's good work. 
All right. Are we underway? Let me get you guys a scoreboard so you guys can see who is playing who. Let me get the chat back in here. Hunter Thorne, proud of you, bro. I don't care what you say, man. You're good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you, brother. Isaiah out. There's Hunter right there. Give me one, give me one second. I'm going to make sure that my sponsored player stands at least five feet away from Kristen. <laughs> five feet. Five feet away from each other. No, from her. For your safety. <laughs> No more not, not on that side either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go, chat. We're in this match. 3 nothing start, it looks like. Justin Lang and Landon Crabtree, they have to pull off the double dip. They are throwing the cornhole scenario bags. I'm not sure if they're sticking with the sabotages or not. We know Ryan Windsor and Matthew Creek Killer. First time really going to take a look at them throwing the Phantoms so far. I would say so good. Looks like they're doing a great job. They made it here, so they're going to be throwing on something more decent. All right. Sitting in the king seat, and I'll keep you guys up to date the best I can over there on that uh, court three matchup. Right now, Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano in the lead. Looks like eight to oh. zero. All right, shrink that down. Oh, that ain't going to work either. And Zooks, good call. Good call. That's why I got you here. Ten to zero now. Try my best. Lindy, calm down, Lindy. Don't yell at me. You could just say scoreboard, Lindy. You don't have to put scoreboard exclamation mark. What's wrong with you? This looks like push coming up here. Going to try and get them both. Oh, able to get one. Nice attempt. It's so crazy, though, how Windsor is able to generate such accuracy with that shot. He's putting so much force into that release. But for the most part, man, his line drive, air mills, and everything is in the right position. Doing good. Josh Bennett says, is that Brooks? Absolutely. It is. Hey, Joe Zek, welcome back in, man. Hey, we're enforcing foot fouls now, Joe. Welcome in. Frank Verona, my dude, how you doing, brother? Hope you're having a good time. Way too late, Lindy. You have to file a formal complaint with the ACL on the scoreboard situation. You can reach them at fake account at iplayacl.com. Smith and Wiedenfeld now on the board, 10 to 2. Tied up 3 3 here. Crabtree going up top for the airmail, too far to the left. Off the board it goes. Creek Killer with three bags on the board, chasing 4 to 3 on the round so Ryan, far, Ryan's thinking about going up. Here, Ryan called for it, so. Oof. It was way off. Yeah, yeah, it was about 28 feet. That one off to the left again. Both the Crabtree's airmails off to the left. So the needle's going to move a little bit more. PPR killer rounds. Are we still doing an escape room tonight? I don't know. <laughs> I was wondering why they're still sitting here next to us. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. Maybe <laughs> but I figure whenever she on. goes to the emergency room, that's off the table. But <laughs> these are the three people we're supposed to go <laughs> right. with. So. Did they ever make reservations? I mean, that was Tristan's job. But her being in the emergency room today, who knows? Justin Lane kind of stepping out. Slick side down. Didn't have enough on that to get it to go. Windsor again with a double clutch. Doesn't come across the line, though. It's something that he did last year. Good. Uh, he, I don't know if he likes that back, but I love that back. That's perfect position. Going to take away that push. Justin Ling isn't one of these players that's going to change his throw to redirect and throw a little bit more at it. You know what I mean? Like some of these youngsters, they'll come across the line to put more force behind it. Justin Ling's not that type of guy. So this is a good position here for Windsor to be in. Possibly four points on the block. He's going to get it. Nicely done. Way to use those bags at the right time. Like I said, I'm not sure if that's what he wanted to do with that bag, number three, but I, I love the placement on it. I agree. 
The score is going to be 7 to 4 here. Update over there on court number 3, Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano 10 to 4 over Smith and Wiedenfeld. That's game 1 over there. This is game 1 here. Crabtree too far to the right. I mean, I kind of was hoping we get both finals. Right. Well, maybe if one ends in game one and one goes to game two. <laughs> I mean, the problem is the one going to game two <laughs> has the game on the other court, so we're just going to have a lot of downtime. A lot of that beautiful uh, commercial music. Andrew Winter, what up? Kill shots, cornhole, strong muscle, strong muscle emoji. Let's go. Absolutely. Just speaking of uh, Windsor's force that he can put on that bag with that wow. short fuse. That bag did not look like it was thrown that hard. It just seemed to hit a fast spot on right. the board, goes off the back. Landon experiencing confusion on that one. Not really sure what happened. I'm right there with him, to be honest with you. But 12 to 4 here. Windsor and Creek Killer in the lead. Hamilton Cano 10 to 6. So we're definitely getting a BG team over on the other side out of Hamilton and Cano, Smith and Wiedenfeld. This one's up for grabs, though. Yes. I mean, I've seen Justin Lang throw pretty much every different type of bag that there is, including OG Game Changers, very, very well. Just one of those. I don't think there was steady, a steady release down the middle. Yeah, I don't think there's a player I wanted to see throw with Frank Milden more than Justin Lang when he threw Slick Side Game Changer religiously. I mean, mm -hmm. he was lights out back in our area. Any player that has the finesse to be able to control a slick side game changer. It's usually pretty decent on the boards to just be down the middle and in. If you can learn that high arcing tilted bag where you can hit next to the hole and watch that game changer just fall on the side like the Damon Dennis. The I'll tell you Damon what, that Dennis shot cut. right there too from Justin Lang, whenever you have a chance to go airmail and get three, but you decide to just go board and get one, get your partner first throw. When you're down by a big deficit, you don't see that too much in the pro division anymore, and I think right. we need more of that. Just be fine taking your one. Right. You don't always have to get that replay, even though I know it's really, really cool. So here we go. Here's a, a perfect opportunity. You had the first bag, and we got two misses on the other side. I don't think seem too happy with that, but that really takes away the push shot. Justin Lane kind of coaching him back into the board. I think we're getting to see an airmail here. Reverse spin, you know, he has to put a lot more effort into it to get that bag down there. Oh, nice hit. Big shot, hits it clean. Well, he tries to roll over the top. It's going to be a 10 on 6 there for a 4. Let's take a look at this hit one more time there from Landon going up top. Hits it nicely. Maybe. <laughs> 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 Keck standing up and Landon got scared. <laughs> I think Keck was just standing up to stretch and Landon got scared. <laughs> All right, 12 11. They're back into it, though. Big round right there. Big hit. What up, Kyle Butler, Brandy Cobb? How you guys doing? Welcome in. Again, Justin Lang and Landon Crabtree have to pull off the double dip. Over there on court number three, Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano trying to do the same thing. Right now it's 17 to 6 over Smith and Wiedenfeld. Well, he's very upset with his force back blocker. Yeah, he's not upset, but he's not in a bad position here. I mean, right. Ryan Windsor's the one that's got to hit a difficult shot. 
That miss right there could actually end up getting him another point if Windsor's air mills off the back. It is not. He will go short, actually, and take in Lang with him. So 13 to 12 right now. Lang and Crabtree take the lead. Sorry, he's getting a little parched. He's waiting on a social. A drink. Yeah. Taking a drink anyway. What up, Wally? Another exciting season this year. Yes, sir, Kyle. Gonna have a good time, man. Good time indeed. However, I'm gonna miss you guys. I won't be back for an open for four more opens. Open number six will be my next one. Although I do get to partake in Australia, which should be fun. We will be joining you on the Canine Network, though, for your other. Yeah, we'll adventure. be. Uh, got a conference tournament, Badgerland Bag Brawl, and then two courts for the Battle of the Queens. By the way, Bennett said, "Don't forget to bring your boards." To Australia? No, to Battle of the Queens. Are you supposed to bring boards to that? He's making boards for him. <laughs> I thought he was the one to bring them. <laughs> you guys better get this communication together. <laughs> yeah, come on, Josh. I'm excited for the Battle of Queens. It's always a good time. I've never been. I've never been. There we go, Brooks. He wanted it. Social. Social. Let's see who partakes in it. Nobody. Not a single person. Uh, it's dying, man. I gotta get we, we gotta, gotta get, get loud. Air, we gotta get like an air horn. Wow, wow, wow. Social meow, 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 meow. <laughs> Where's Duncan Clemmer when I know? Hopefully S U V block here. Two weeks away, so excited. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's two weeks away? Battle of Queens. Battle of Queens two weeks away? No. Three, right? Two. Hold on. One's Battle of Queens. Yeah, third and fourth. Mm -hmm. Third, fourth, fifth. Huh. Yeah, definitely not ready. <laughs> 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 and guess what I'm going to be doing Monday? <laughs> so Lang went off the side right here. Chance for Windsor to retake the lead. Speaking of the Battle of the Queens, we just released a... Whoops! Very nice looking Battle of the Queens design bag. Check it out at SevaCornhole.com. Fourteen to twelve here. Game number one. Lang and Crabtree finding a way to get into this one and get game number two. Right now, over there in game one, Hamilton and Kano in the lead. 18 to 9 over Smith and Wiedenfeld. That one barely looked like it was going to get on the board, but it's actually in great position. Forces Landon to step all the way out. With his reverse uh, spin, though, he should have a good time getting around that. Yep. Like you can see his eyes get a little bit bigger anytime he has an opportunity for that shot. As long as Josh Kick stays seated. Uh oh. That slick side took off on him. Landon kind of repositioning himself. Doesn't want the full three feet. Nicely done. Tell you what, if he doesn't scoot back over those two inches, he's not getting that bag in the hole. So straight off the back, like the good adjustment. Nicely done. We need more of those strappy can koozies from Siva. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Got plenty of them here. I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed using that yesterday. Or was it two days ago? Two days ago. Two days ago. Yeah, I forgot. I blacked out yesterday <laughs> out of my memory <laughs> bank entirely. <laughs> Selective that remembrance. Was, that was definitely was, a, rough, a, rough, a rough day for the live stream, for sure. I don't know if I've ever gone... More times in my life <laughs> where, like, I just didn't want to say anything, but I had to take a deep breath and just kind of regroup. It was difficult for me, you know. Our booths are so far away from the, the courts at this open. The only way I was able to watch anything was through the live stream, and it was definitely a frustration on the viewership as well. 
I know you were doing the best you could. So it was all. I think that was the frustrating part tricks. about it is that it wasn't even like anything I could have done about it. it just it just had to happen. I just kind of had to let it play its course. Literally a live feed where you set it up, you try your best, and you just wait till it's over. But it is what it is. Justin Carpenter checking in, trying to get a quick look at his partner right here, having good success. Right now battling it out for the bracket finals, currently in the lead four points away. We're here in round number 14 over there on court three. They are in round 24. Score is 19 to 9 over there. Landon wanting to block, getting confirmation there from Justin about what the strategy is. Misses his landing spot too far to the right. That bag is actually out of play now. Creek Healer doesn't have to get both of these on one shot. Ooh. And that's exactly why I say that, because I don't want that bunch. I actually wanted him to take off the left side first and then go after the right bag next. Not sure what um, Windsor is telling him right now at this moment, but it is a very interesting situation here. If I'm landing and I'm going to fire this block, I do not want this block close to that pile. I want it low on the board. I want to take away that landing spot for Creek Killer's rollback. Yeah, I think the best shot for this is one of those uh, kind of short air mills where you land it almost has to be close. He can't touch the bags, but you want to be close because you want to take a, take away that. I don't want to give Creek Killer that ramp, slide. though. We'll see. Oh. Just the vibration alone makes it fall. Now, the good news is only one of those fell. The one in front is still sitting there in place. No, two. There was three bags there. Yeah. Two of them went. Yeah, well, two went. The third one in front is still there. Yeah. Which, if I was Creek Killer, I would want to leave that there. Make it extremely difficult for Landon. Well, Landon's out of bags, though. Oh, so, that, so that's damage bags. control. It's going to be two points, and we're going to get a little Josh Keck announcement. Creek Killer's going to get a warning. <laughs> All right, so what happened there is Creek Killer landed, and then on the follow-through, he lifted his foot crossing the line. Josh Keck issues the warning. Looks like we're good to go. Side-by-side -side block there. Uh, Keegan, no, I won't be playing in the Australia Open. Just commentating, man. That is actually going to be my reset moment. So as we head into the 2024 season, I will... Have a big woo-saw moment after we commentate for Australia. I'm going to take one day. I'm going to go visit P42 Sherman Wallaby Way or whatever it is. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to have a good time. Have you been to Australia before? Never, man. It's Never. It's excellent country to be in. I had the fortunate enough to go spend a week there in high school as a exchange program. We had a Australian student stay with us for a week, and then we were able to go to Australia Rare miss. for a week. Excellent time. Side rail there from Windsor. It's Windsor having one bag off. Timeout to see this could be a game, a game winning push. All right, let's see what Lynn can do here. Nothing's in the hole yet. Well, he just goes for the Pushes block. the pile. He's fine with that. He's wanting yeah. to set something up here. I, and I think I like that, too, because if he gets his bag on the hole to fall right now, Windsor has an attempt to get more points out of this round here. So Windsor has to kind of play a little, Windsor I guess, to get this defensive in offense here, I guess, in a way. Wow. Lands on the pile. Yeah, on the board, on the board is four. That's game. Yeah. That's exactly what I was talking about. That's deeper than I wanted that one. But still, <laughs> it's going to be four points. And we're going to head to game number two here. We're also going to head to game number two over there in the A bracket. 
as Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano take down game number one there, 21 to nine. Josh Keck is called over to the boards to make some good adjustments to make sure that mat is flat. So that's why Landon was tripping over the line the whole time. Do we get another? Do, does it get another warning as a new? That's a, new a good game question. Starts? Is there a warning? Does he get a second warning now? No more no warning. More warning? He gets another warning. Oh, he gets another warning. <laughs> New game. New game. Heard it from the man himself. If I knew I got a warning, I'm throwing that bag into a cartwheel while I'm over the line. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Purpose, I can skip the <laughs> right. I asked that question earlier. I said, if it's a, if it's for a game-winning push, why not just ignore it and just take your warning? And he said, if it's if it's a blatant foot violation. Now, is this like no the warning. NFL where if like an elbow or a thigh touches? It counts because if he keeps his foot planted behind the line but falls on the ground. So three seconds to pick himself up. Okay, get back. All right. I just want to make sure that we're on the same page here. So, chat, there you go. I've answered that question for you guys. I want to see how many rounds that Ryan. I don't think you'd be able to go back on that. You got to think you had to score zone. Or no, you can, yeah. So, yeah, 13, 26 rounds. Because it shows game one until there's a bit of scores on it. 26 round game. Good landing spot your, there. How do I bring your scoreboard back up? Two game twos. How about that, chat? Doubles action underway today. Singles tomorrow. Pretty sure we start at 9 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. I feel like today went by pretty quickly. Actually, today wasn't bad. I, feel like I got a chance to sleep in. I got a chance to get everything set up. We've had a good day on live feeds. I'm learning the replay. That's going to be a different process for me. So This new setup to have a different replay? Yeah, so the new the replay, the kind of way you look at it here is you can kind of see here I get to pick where the replay starts and where it ends. So I get to size it where I want. What's pretty cool, and I get to change between 50%, 100% speed. Oh, so nice. a lot of cool things. And then as we get further and further into the season, we can even start keeping re replay that the camera's not on. So not on the main camera, we can keep replay. So in other words, if there's a uh, awkward knuckle that I miss on the other side, we'll make sure we get that captured. Awesome. Well, maybe uh, maybe something from the crowd cam. Yeah, crowd cam. Might need a replay. Yeah. You never know. Maybe some uh, ice cream in the stands or something. Ooh, like Landon and actually was Mr. <laughs> ice Cream in <laughs> Iowa. That was actually two years ago <laughs> in Iowa. Good call. <laughs> Forgot about that. Actually, if they win this game, I'm going to call them over here. Can you imagine if this comes full circle and Landon <laughs> throws a bag in front of the board <laughs> to lose <laughs> and the Internet issues and oh, everything just comes goodness. back? And, oh, my gosh. I'm not putting that out there. We, we got a truce. I forgot. We got a truce. Yeah. I'm not going to mess with Landon no more. <laughs> All right, so update over there on court three. Ryan Smith and Ryan Wiedenfeld in the lead. Game number two, five to two over Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano. No score yet here, three rounds in. Whoa. That thing had some heat on it, flying off the back of the board, all the way back to the rise fuel sign. Bring up the chat here. We will now see the game twister moves to keep your foot planted. <laughs> I'm all about it, you know what I mean? <laughs> the official being there seems to affect Windsor. All right, so if I'm a player, I don't care about the foot roll. You know what I mean? Right, well, I think this is a viewer-only thing. I, Viewers I, care about it. If I, I'm a player, I don't care if I win a game because he stepped over the line. You know what I mean? You... Having the official, bringing a point to them with what they're saying, having an official on the court would mess with me more than my opponent stepping over the line more. It, 
but I, I believe that the players truly want to follow the rules. Well, yes, you I know? agree with that. So but saying that they don't, they don't care about the foot foul. If you're saying a player doesn't care if their opponent steps over, I agree. I don't, honestly, I don't think they. The majority of the players out here went to regripping it. Don't care if their opponent steps over the line. But I believe you know rules are there to create an even playing field. Whatever you know, the rules in place, it needs to be followed. Ooh, nice backside. That's stick. About as far as you could have missed <laughs> right. that on the back of the hole for it to go. Nice little stick there from Windsor. Push from Lane, kind of kicked off to the side, not necessarily out of play. Both players trying to figure out how to get this bag. Windsor went player, with the bully. And then I believe the players that used to step over are truly trying to stay behind the line. And I think when the official shows up and there are those players that have a tendency to step over and they're really working on their game to stay behind the line, I think it creates a mental situation for them with the official there. Uh oh Another warning coming here as Windsor steps over the line. I think we need a replay. Here we go. Ryan, Ryan is not, not pleased. Brent does not believe he crossed the line. All right, so Windsor not happy with that judgment. Score still says 0-0. We're five rounds in here. Windsor has been issued a warning. Now, I'm not 100% sure either. Does it go per player or per team as far as the warnings go? We'll get to the bottom of all these rules by the time we get to national number one. But regardless, warning issued there. Score update on court number three. Hamilton and Cano in the lead 8-7 to seven over Smith and Wiedenfeld. Josh Bennett wants to join the commentary, it sounds like. Well, he's not very smart, so no. <laughs> How about this, though? If you guys want to see um, Cornhole Chemistry logo on the live feed and Josh Bennett commentating, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. How about that? Yeah. There are spots available, bro. Hit me up. I know a guy. All right, Creek able to finish off the final shot there. That's a double four bagger. Social. Giving right. clarification there to... Ryan Windsor, that his back foot is not coming up off the ground. So the violation basically is like I was talking about earlier with Windsor's approach. Windsor does lift up both feet. It barely moves, but it does lift up. So in theory, the rule is violated by Windsor's throw whenever he does that. Only he's just got to make sure they crosses. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Behind the line, you watch him here. He kind of does it here. He's going to throw. He barely moves a little bit. What would happen on that powerful shot is that he was able to um, come, or he, he did come across the line. It looks like he is trying to move Shauna those, Foreman. What up, Shauna? Hope move you're doing his well. momentum to the right to stay behind the line and still keep his momentum. And it looks like that shot he just carried a little over the line. <laughs> Great advice, Landon. Lang asking for the airmail. Landon says, I don't know, whatever you like. Kind of a deep push. Almost looked like one of those airmails that you tried to throw in the hole and ends up only going 29 feet. <laughs> Back block now landing without any hesitation. Tells him to go up top for the airmail. Uh, Josh Keck, why can't they challenge it? Well, we haven't made challenge flags yet. Uh, we don't have we, we don't have an apparel company that would make a challenge flag. Uh, we are looking for sponsors though. So if you are out there and you want to make an apparel challenge flag, hit me up at Wally at iplaycornhole.com and we'll try and make that effect. Um, you can even sponsor the segment. We'll make that happen. It's a challenge. The ABC Apparel Challenge mm -hmm. sponsor. It just looks like there's a couple times this game where Landon finds a fast spot on the board that nobody else has found. I, th I think it's the angle of his bag. I think... When your bag hits a hits the board at a certain angle, it just there's no bounce. It just carries out momentum so effortlessly. 
Good placement on that block. I'm shooting this air mill from Creek Killer. But I know he likes to roll it. There it is. Roll. Wow. That's why, like, see, that roll attempt doesn't really cross my mind as my first shot. Players like Creek Killer can execute it such perfection, man. I just can't get it. It's amazing to me. Josh Bennett says, no more warnings next time. Throw them out. Well, there's rules for what happens after the warning, and it's not being ejected. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I want to see a violation. I want to see <laughs> this happen here. I, yes, I'm. It is quite difficult the ruling on what happens with a dead bag if mm. it touches other bags on the board. So, just for you guys to know, by the way, if there is a violation and Ket goes out there to enforce it, this is what you guys are going to see. <laughs> Got, er, hold on, couldn't quite get the <laughs> silhouette of that ponytail with me uh, behind you there. Or Norwal tail, should we call it? A uh, Norwal, yeah. Ones are leaving that bag on the right side. Can't believe we're eight rounds in and only two points on the board here. And Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano in game number two in the lead, 11-7 over there on court number three. <laughs> Josh Keck wants to reject who's it's going to be. I'm pretty sure Josh Keck has access to ban you from the chat, so it could be you. <laughs> are able to finish there on the final <laughs> shot. He looks down to that red and black line. <laughs> so the way Josh Keck explained it earlier was the, if you violate a foot foul after your warning, if you gain any points from that bag, that bag is a dead bag. If you gain any points from that bag being thrown, those points will be deducted at the end of the round. And if your opponent lost any points from that bag being thrown, i.e. a bully, an and one, anything like that, those points will be added at the end of the round. So I'm curious on how exactly <laughs> yeah. that's going to play out or how you You sounded like Charlie score. Brown's teacher right there to me, man. I tried to follow you. I was paying close attention. <laughs> and all I heard was <laughs> All the reason why we want to see this. <laughs> I want to see the it, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Windsor. I mean, it is only 2 nothing. This is where you need a... I need that monitor over here with the mouse so I can <laughs> change the camera angles on what's happening, but... You want to talk about just having an official mess with your mental state. Once you start having the points gained deducted from your port. What a shot there from Landon. That can really affect your state for the rest of the game. Let's take a look at that again as he's able to drive through and only take his bag in. Nicely done. Getting himself back into this game. And they are on the board now. Two to two. Ten rounds in. Only two points on the board for each team. Absolutely crazy. I just hope it violates it, like, during, like, a five-bag push or something. <laughs> Where we're like, okay, what? Let's the first, first, let's decipher if it was a violation. Second, let's decipher what actually happened. Yeah, what was actually caused due to this bag being thrown. And the way, the way Josh said it was it, it will it'll be calculated at the end of the round. So, yeah. It sounded like the <laughs> round will continue to this be played. Those, this is one of those better him than be, me moments. <laughs> <laughs> It'll only be calculated on that one bag. So this it's a very difficult thing to ca calculate, I think. Mm -hmm. It's a good shot there from Lang, avoiding Ryan's bag at all cost. Far luck, the foot foul is going to be violated on the very last bag of a social. And all it's going to be is that one bag is going to be dead, and it's going to be a three-point round, and we're not going to learn anything. <laughs> I 
That's interesting. Windsor took a timeout there. But then he walked down, and him and Landon started talking to each other. So I don't know what that was about. Whoopsie. Maybe Landon, maybe he has Landon what it feels like to throw back short. Front of the board. <laughs> and he's like, is this what you would do in this particular situation? <laughs> I'm sorry. We're, Bloop. We're, not, we're supposed to have a truce here. So. I don't know what That's happened there. Fun. That was a yep. mental mistake from Ryan Windsor. I don't know if there was a confrontation there about, and maybe Landon was moving. I, don't, I didn't see it, chat. If you guys can provide me any type of insight into what just happened right there. It's really weird that you would call a timeout and then kind of talk to the opponent for any particular situation. So I don't know if maybe Landon was talking in the middle of, I guess you guys couldn't see on the camera angles, so never mind. But yeah, I don't know. It was really weird. I know there's some some players that movement behind the board really affects them. So it could, that could have been the situation. I was focused on I feet. I mean, so yeah, I Windsor, yeah, Windsor came back after talking to Crabtree. He's shaking his head. Then threw that bag in front of the board, and then Landon yeah, is probably in his own head here as he fires one off the back. <laughs> Good push right there, driving through everything. Let's see if Creek Killer can get one of these. Slick side down, able to get anything, unable to get anything to fall. 17 to 7 now. If anybody has any questions on the rules, please feel free to message Josh at josh at iplaycornhole.com. He will provide you all the details that you need to know. First shot down the middle there from Justin Lane. I have a feeling his response is going to sound something like this. It's on the website. Feel free to check it out at your own liege. Please check out the player guide on iplaycornhole.com. Game number two over there, almost finished. Landon, I'm sorry, Ryan <laughs> Smith and Ryan Wiedenfeld down 19 to seven. But That's game number two. Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano trying to finish it off. But I was say, it's not over till the fat lady sings, and anything can happen. This is a very interesting match. The way this stuff is kind of playing itself out. Landon Crabtree in his rookie season here. Justin Lang, a former ACL pro. Everyone kind of peeking over here at the table every now and then <coughs> to see what Josh Keck has to say. Josh Keck keeping a real, real close eye on that line. Watching both sides like a hawk. Rick Cham is checking in. What up, Rich? And that'll do it. Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano take that one down. So Gavin Cano and Fisher Hamilton advance to the championship match. They're going to play the winner of this one right here. Right now, Justin Lang and Landon Crabtree in the lead in round number 13. So puffy. <laughs> I can feel it like bunched like right here. <laughs> All right, messing with my hair, chat. Sorry about that. Seven to two. What's Landon gonna do? I'm gonna shoot this air mill if I'm him. Creek killer with a chance here. He's got slick side down in his hand. Gonna use these bags as bumpers. He does. Nicely done. Gets two points. Gets Windsor first shot. Let's see if Windsor has mentally regrouped and can get back into this one.
Well, it looks like the regroup has happened. Looks like they're both down in the middle again. Oh, and the announcer jinx. Did you rip your rubber band? I did. I'm gonna have to go with the fro. I'm gonna go buy a hat at the Siva tent. I know that. I know uh, most people that I know that wear hair ties have about six of them on their wrist at all times. Well, I did actually. I had two, and then I broke one over it out <laughs> when I was talking to Alex Hicksbaum. And then the second one fell off somewhere. I think I was using it as a wallet wrap for a second. With a man with two daughters, I have hair ties in every nick and cranny in my house. I'm still getting the hang of this, man. Still getting the hang of this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a great shot there to get that in the middle and bully that bag off the side. I gotta say, I gotta give credit to Landon Crabtree though and Justin Lang. I didn't expect this match to be not only going to game oh. two. Whoopsie! <laughs> and the there goes the hat. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna, and he's gonna cross the line. It's gonna get even worse for him. It's gonna be a warning. <laughs> <laughs> the the fit of throwing the hat in the. Fun <laughs> I feel I feel like that one's on me. I wasn't even trying to say anything about that bag in front of the right. board. And then he looked right at me and threw his hat across the board. It does bring another aspect to this, it this does. rule. I mean, that wasn't uh, that wasn't a bag throwing motion. You know, if something happens after the bag is thrown. I think the other thing, too, in that situation is that did that bag already hit the board? Like, when does the rule come into effect? You know what I mean? Right. I wasn't paying attention to uh, his placement. I was uh, following the bag in flight, so I, when I turned around, he wasn't from the board with the with his hat on the ground. So well, one of the interesting things that's shaping up here is two of the biggest culprits last season to this rule violation were Gavin Cano and Fisher Hamilton. They are on the championship match, and they will be up next. So let's see how it actually plays a factor as far as their game is concerned. I think it is definitely playing a flat factor here on these players. But regardless, it is the rule. Something we're going to have to go into the season thinking about. Windsor is just steaming right now. I don't know if Windsor's got any friends in attendance, but somebody needs to get this man a, a little woo-saw beverage or water or something, <laughs> whatever he needs. we got to get him calmed down. Whoopsie! Another bag in front of the board, and not only that, but it knocks in Landon's bag in the process. So Landon showing plus three so far in this one, going into bag number two. Here a little bit too far to the right. This could be a huge round for Landon. Creek Killer looked like he tried to cut into that pile. That bag rolled on him, though, as soon as it hit the board. I don't know if he was trying to cut or if he was trying to roll Slick over. Slick side down here for Landon. He's going to try and push through this. That reverse cut playing a huge factor right there. Huge shot. Keep in mind, Creek Killer's already got one in front of the board right here. He's just trying to finish up with this bag in the hole for a seven to give up five. And he will. And just like that, they got themselves a 10-point lead heading into round 18. 16 to 6. Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano pull off the double dip over Ryan Smith and Ryan Wiedenfeld. Championship match up next. Too far to the left there on bag number one. I don't care how Windsor does it, he needs these two points, and that's not going to be a good start.
Man, I have not seen Windsor shake his head in disgust so many times. It's just, I almost feel bad for him. I don't even know what's going through his head right now, but right now he is struggling with whatever he's battling in that head. This is one thing I want to see with Creek Killer and Windsor. Whenever one player is down, how do they pick each other up? Right. Both players are kind of quiet in that regard. I don't like that shot right there from Lang. He's got a chance to collect his bag. Honestly, I think it was just a miss on the right, to the right. It looked like he landed soft. I don't know. I thought he was trying to go for a block there, but he had the lane to get the collect. Well, he's forcing Windsor to do some crazy stuff, and he's going to go for the air mill and rim out. Two points for Lang. So even though I didn't like it, it pays off for him. Winter hat comes off, head, palm. 18-6, Landon Crabtree, Justin Ling, almost able to pull off the double dip. By the way, chat, you guys notice another K-9 life he went to game number two? Didn't matter which match I had, they were going to game number two. Ryan started with the confusion of the foot foul, which he didn't agree with, the foot foul warning. And then the timeout. I mean, the thing with the thing with Windsor's foot fouls, it was so subtle. Like when we saw Creek Killer do it earlier, Creek Killer did step across the line, back foot came up, clear violation. Mm -hmm. Windsor's, like I said, whenever he violates it, he's just barely stepping over, right there on the black. Right. It's very unfortunate for players like him that really don't, put that much more effort into their throw and still are going to get hit by it. Board vibration makes that one fall there for Creek Killer. He's taking a step out to try and get a different angle at this roll attempt. Has a corner hanging, but I'm pretty sure it's that bag in hand is out of play. Timeout here from Landon. Just barely caught that front, that front block and pushed it off to the side. I think this Need a timeout here, Windsor as well. I'm watching Windsor right now and how he's talking with Creek Killer. I think they're talking more about that round than the game in general, and I kind of want them to talk about the game in general right now. Yeah, they, they they're, need they're, a motivation boost. Yeah, their skill level is not the issue right now. I think it's a level of concentration that's uh, affecting them. But again, we talked with Keck about it. It is at the director's discretion. So if he feels like the player is violating on purpose or knows that they're doing it, then it will be a factor. That one did not get enough over. Is that a 6-6 six, six wash? I think it is. So yeah, so in other words, if you if you want to put a little bit more into it and you know you have a, a, a warning coming, you're available to give a warning, but it's a clear violation on purpose, then they will call you and enforce the rule that way, so. Doesn't necessarily mean to get a warning every single time that it happens. And I said this last time, Lang missed his first shot. Windsor has got to get out of this round with two points. Got to have forward momentum. I'll tell you what, if he takes four points, that's fine too. Just has to score, that's all I gotta say. Even if it ends up uh, a layup for one or an air mail for more, you know, like you talked about earlier. He needs to get that momentum. He needs to get that first bag back. Crabtree giving Justin Lane the airmail sign, telling him to shoot it right here. He's been a little short on his airmail. I don't know. <laughs> Again, it's so short. I don't know if he's <laughs> going for the airmail. If he says no, I don't want to. But I feel like he's putting Windsor in these positions for a reason. Windsor pushes. I didn't see, but I'm going to keep an eye on it. All right, so I don't know. I feel like he'd cross the line. <laughs> I don't know. He got back quick, though. Again, it's it's hard for me to watch the feed. I'm watching the bag land on the board. I'm turning back. So. I feel like Gavin accidentally distracted him at the right time <laughs> to not enforce that rule because I think <laughs> – I think Windsor came across and then lifted his back foot, but Keck was distracted by Gavin Kahn off to the side here. So Another, another strategy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, have one of your friends help at the right time. Just give him a signal. Hey, I'm about to, about to hit a hard shot here. 
talk to him. Go ask to see if he can sign up for a seat and go. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, 18 to 8, though. Round number 21. These two teams have been battling for quite some time now. Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Connell have made their way over to the court. They are waiting for the championship match. That's going to be a one-and-done situation as both brackets will collide. Great bag there. I think my favorite part of this whole situation that's shaping up here is any time somebody steps across knowingly with one foot, they immediately look over to Keck just for confirmation <laughs> that they're okay. <laughs> All right, here it is, 20 to 8, though. Back against the wall, how will Creek Killer and Windsor respond? First bag is out of play there for Windsor. Lane gives it right back on bag number two, though. I want this wedge here from Ling. I don't want this bag in the hole. He drives right through it. He just wants to clean it up. He's hoping Windsor misses again, and that could be it. Actually, that could be the miss he's hoping for. I'm shooting this if I'm Ling. I'm putting this bag in the hole, and I'm forcing Windsor to collect that bag. And again, Ling elects to not go for it. And that's why. That's why I want Ling shooting that airmail. They don't call it the Lang Bang because he lays up. I mean, I guess that's a new saying, the Lang Lay. But, I mean, I, I, here I am talking trash from the sideline, but it has worked for them. They have gotten this far by playing the style of game that they played. The conservative approach from Justin Lang right now in the last couple times has worked out for him. He's not given up points. We've seen a couple times where it's gotten two points, so... We, I mean, know, I, we're already talking about how. I guess I'm sitting corrected. I mean, I guess I mean, we're, we're talking about how Ryan seems to be off his game and frustrated, and Justin Link could be just saying that and say, yeah. "Well, I can just play conservative because he's already in his head." Yeah, that's true. Wow, good cut! Look at that bite good on that back from Creek right. Killer. I wonder if I start throwing kill shot phantoms, if I can start getting that right to left bite. If you can throw my like Creek Killer, sure. I'm going to study his every throw. <laughs> All right, so sticky side down, still in hand. Let me see what he's doing different than I am. Ah, he's throwing it like a professional. Um, That's my mistake right there. Go to flat bag. Come here. Timeout gate. How many timeouts did he have, chat? Let us know. Let us know. <laughs> oh, man, Corey's going to be mad. I forgot I got the graphic. There it is. Now you guys know it's a timeout. Timeout. We need Bernie. Timeout. Court one. Timeout brought to you this weekend by. That could be your company, chat. If you have a sponsorship opportunity that you're looking to take advantage of, make sure you reach out to me. Again, Wally at iPlayCornhole.com. You could be just like Rise Fuel, designed to rise above the best. Right now, Justin Lang and Landon Creep Killer are doing... Landon Creek Killer. Wow. <laughs> Justin Ling and Landon Crabtree are doing exactly that. Rising above the rest here in game number two, up 20 to eight. Game could be on the line right here. Crabtree's already got one in. Creek Killer's back is kind of sitting. They only need one more point. Let's see what the timeout brought here to Landon. I don't think anything fancy here. He does. Airmail hits it. Big shot, forcing. Creek Killer to either go up or roll over the pile. Creek Killer motions for airmail. Landon stared me down after that airmail. Creek Killer lands short off the back of the board. It's going to go. Landon Crabtree, Justin Ling. How about that? I was wrong on almost every single call. Justin Ling, Landon Crabtree did the exactly opposite of what I thought. Either way, championship match when we come back, chat. See you in just a little bit here in Des Moines, Iowa.
All right, Chad, welcome back here to court number one, brought to you by Rise Fuel Energy Drinks, designed to rise above the rest. Championship match is set. Landon Crabtree and Justin Lang going to take on Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano. This is a one-and-done situation here, Chad. Both teams have been issued a warning. We're going to go ahead and turn on Josh Keck. He's going to explain every single thing that you, you need to know ready. for the rest of your life. All right, so I need to clear up chat a little bit here. So Landon Crabtree on almost all of his throws. I mean, there was two warnings that he got in the last couple of games. Um, when he crosses the line with one foot, he does keep his back foot planted, even though he drags it. You can still drag it. Planted means contact with the ground. So as long as he keeps contact with the ground, which camera is it? Oh, it's this way. As long as he keeps contact with the ground, it is not a foot foul. He can drag his foot to another spot behind the line. And that is still a good throw. Does that make sense, Wally? Why are you talking in your radio voice? It makes sense to me. My radio voice? This is my Josh Keck, calm, I don't tournament wanna, director, I don't wanna, chaos I, voice. I don't want to yell into chat. They can't hear you. It's fine. Nobody listens to Keck anyway. Okay. All right, so it looks like they are set and ready to go. So these bags are live. Look at that roll shot. Define planted as long as it's in contact with the ground. All right. That is planted. Bang there from Airmill City. See, Justin Lang, he, he just never crosses the line. So he has no issues with this one whatsoever. Yeah, he doesn't move either foot. Yeah, and good for him. The problem is, though, whenever he generates uh, you know, his faster shot, he doesn't really have much behind it. So that's going to be one of these things that kind of factors in for Justin Lang is how much force can he actually get behind that bag without really you know, stepping over the line like these youngsters do. It is a one-pound bag, Wally. I'm just saying. Give or take a little bit. I mean, you barely get it there. That's true. You're a 52-year-old man. 42. Oh. Did you see there? Yep, yeah, he's good with that one. He didn't lift his back foot. The, the warning that I gave the Windsor in the last game... He threw the bag, one foot crossed the line, and then he lifted his back foot, and that also crossed the line. So it's that, that was a warning for him. It was a foot foul. Everything is subjective. A two nothing start here for Hamilton and Kano. They are my overall pick to win this thing as we finish the final few rounds of rounders. So far, looking pretty good. Able to pull up both these teams in this finals here, able to pull off the double dip. Going back to Justin's throw, he doesn't he doesn't move a foot at all, right, as he's throwing. That's kind of what I do, but <laughs> he's Justin, a lot more accurate than you Justin are. Justin does not make it look as awkward as I do. Yeah. <laughs> his, his throw is actually really smooth. Good push right there into the pile. Let's see if he can hit that lane again. Possibly trying to generate two points to tie this thing. I mean, Fisher's bag is on the hole. He might be able to collect it. What's the punishment after excessive warnings? Well, you get one warning per player per game. Big airmail right there from Hamilton. And then what happens is the bag that you threw, if if you do commit a foot foul after your warning, the bag that you threw is dead, and any bags, any points that you gained off of that throw, meaning if you push one of your bags into the hole, you're gaining two points because of that, you're going to go negative two points at the end of the round. So if you end with a nine you're going to end up with a seven. <laughs> I like how clear it is, even as you're explaining it. <laughs> is it clear? I mean, I understood that, but it was like you're trying to like decide, like you're reading it as you're talking. No, you know I'm, I mean? I'm, I'm pausing to watch for these footballs okay, while I'm okay, talking. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm still getting my hair braided. So. Yeah, no, I don't even know how you can see. It's not really that great. <laughs> She's doing a good job, though. So then let, let's say you, after your warning and you footfall again, you throw your bag and you foot foul 
and you knock one of your opponent's bag off of the board, so now they're losing one in that round because of your foot foul, they're going to gain one at the end of the round. So any points gained for you are taken back at the end of the round, and any points lost for your opponent are given back at the end of the round. There's two examples laid out in the rule book on iplayacl.com in the menu and then rules and regulations. You can actually do a, a, a word I do think filter. this is a pretty good open because a lot of these players are going to be, or a lot of these viewers, I should say, are going to go through and read the rule, which is kind of what we want. So that's, I mean, good exposure here, even though we're all kind of, I mean, not we're all, at least me. iplaycornhole.com, menu, rules and regulations, and then it, it's... It's clearly defined. There's two laid out examples of what would happen with a foot foul after a warning. So go ahead and read that. If you have any more questions, bring it to chat. I don't know if Wally will answer them, no. but next time I'm here. I'll answer them all. I'm just not sure if it's going to be exactly yeah, correct. I or was going to say that, but I didn't. So I'll do my best. I hope so, Jason. I hope that is the case, that people take it seriously. Time out from the game. I mean, there was somebody in chat that earlier that said, you know, they changed their their throw once the rules were changed, and they've been working at it. And Yeah, one of the biggest talking points was Dayton Weber. Everyone's like, what's Dayton Weber going to do? What's Dayton, 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 Dayton said, I'm going to adjust. All these players can adjust as well. Practice. 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 It does make perfect, you know. Well, I wouldn't... I, yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, saying before this match started, two of the biggest culprits last season were Gavin Cano and Fisher Hamilton. They've actually done a pretty good job of adjusting. Another one is Ryan Trader. Ryan Trader stepped over pretty much every single throw. He has done a great job of making sure that his toe stays planted to the ground. On 50% of his throws? See, that was close to going over the middle. Violation. But he didn't. I would have called it. It did, didn't. And that, that one was good, too, by Gavin. He's fine. <laughs> he, he knows it. He looks over to us <laughs> and gives us the okay symbol, the thumbs up. He, he says, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Lanny Crabtree, though, with the comment of the day. <laughs> Good job, Josh. Way to get him. Uh, is this other guy coming back now? I got a hat. See, I will say Fisher has done an amazing job on adjusting. I remember last year he was pretty much all over the place. Now he's, he's pretty calm with his throw in his legs. I honestly think you fixed his throw after South Dakota. I mean, hey, I, he was really, really pissed at you, but I'm not taking he's done, credit he's for done it. A great job. But it, it, you live and you learn, and that's what I love about people. When when they live and they learn, and they move on from it, good for them. Makes them a great person. Hair problem solved. Shout out to Katie. Can she help Let's me? Go. All right, get Josh's hair next. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Nope, done. <laughs> All right, Chad, what do you think? We good? We good? We Gucci? All right, back to the action. All right, Brooks, welcome back. Brooks walked all the way over there to the tent to get me a hat, too. I told you not to walk that far. You did it anyway. Somebody's blowing you up, man. Turn it off. All right, so 13 to 2. Welcome back in, Brooks. We got Brooks Canine. We got all the people here. We're having a good time. I need to get my steps in. Yeah, boy. Just don't step both I'm feet actually, over the uh, line. <laughs> I, I have full-blown committed to letting the belly grow. That way I can have a better starting number. That way by the time you guys see me again in Myrtle Beach, I'll be... Okay, yeah. But when, when was the starting time? <laughs> We're not there yet. It'll be tomorrow oh. after we tear oh. down. Oh, okay. Actually, I take that back. Tomorrow after our dinner. How about... Oh, what, whatever, I was going to say whatever before we tear down we get, because you'll lose ooh. a little bit of... Here my lands on the pile and rolls off. Doesn't some move. calories when cleaning up. All right, so I think we're pretty much into this match, about halfway, maybe a little bit more, depending on how long they decide to go. That should be good enough clarification on the rules for you guys. I would hope so. 
I um, can't really read chat while we're. So let's kind of finish out the this. rest of this match. Actually commentating, having some fun, Brooks. Oh, is that your job, though? I'm going to try, man. <laughs> okay. I was getting my hair did. All right, let me know if you need me for anything. Nope, nope, she did it already. She braided my hair. Okay. Mm you wouldn't want me to do that. Can't wait to see how many pictures I end up on Facebook with tomorrow. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody in the crowd was kind of having fun with it. We were waiting for, uh, as they say, hair pretty to arrive. Apparently gaffer tape is not the right play. So shout out to Katie refusing to use gaffer tape to hold my hair in place. I have a question for you, Wally. Appreciate it, Jason. Well, when was it that you were telling me that you were going to actually pay attention and commentate on the games and not, I cannot literally go off on just tangents? said, let's see if Lane can sneak around right there on that shot. No, I mean, like... Hamilton's that, got the angle, oh, gets wow, a good push. That was really nice. Bullied him off as well. So this is the same shot Lane needed last bag. I believe it was somewhere around open number one halfway through the second game. <laughs> no, when did you tell me that you wanted to do that? That you wanted to, to, to focus on oh the gosh, game and commentating. Like last year? <laughs> I mean, I feel like you've told me that at every event. I mean, I've already said it, man. This could be so much better if we had a second person here actually pushing the buttons. When do you I could focus. What, like, what are you talking about? There's two more people Tell here. There's the, there's yeah, a third I'm producing and here. commentating. I don't want to produce too much. I'll, I'll Where's Corey? Buttons. Where's Chase? I'll California and Texas. Tell you what, if you want to pick up Chase every open, you can hang out with Chase. You can be, we'll be fine. I'm glad the camera's Good not roll on right, right there now. from Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love Chase. This isn't recorded, is it? Yep. No. Good camera there from Landon Lang now. Landon Lang, why am I doing that? Landon Lang. Justin Lang. Well, Landon Lang's Landon right Crabtree. there. Yeah. It's, it's oh, you're looking at him? <laughs> it's I got a it's hard to keep track of everything. All right, so Landon going up top for another airmail. I got to say, Landon's airmail has pretty much been on point right now. I'm like, ooh, Gavin off the back. This is a huge round. Let's see if he's able to hit another one. Landon Crabtree channeling his inner Wally K9 to go up top and hit three airmail. Never mind. <laughs> that one's off the back. Somebody over there fell or something. I don't know what happened. That was a loud scream. That was cheering. That was a cheer? <laughs> Sheesh. That, that's been happening in the last couple games. All right, here we go. 15 to 9. Justin Lang with first toss. This is a one and done situation right here. Again, both these teams are their bracket winners, able to pull off the double dip. I think Justin stepped over there. Nope. <laughs> Are you sure? All right. Very sure. A little bit lower on the board than he wanted to. Hit that dead spot. Luckily, able to get there in the level one position. That's one thing that Justin Lang is really, really good at. His landing spots landed right next to that bag. Bullied it on the hole, and oh, Fisher Hamilton did everything possible wow. to get that one to fall. Nice attempt. Still two more points there for Justin Lang. Good attempts on both sides. I do like how Fisher is very animated when he throws. It's very, it's nice to see. It's not like boring, right? He's, he puts everything into it. Yes. Full body throw. Yeah. Josh Bennett says, check out the connection between these two. It's unstoppable. I agree, Josh. Thanks, Wally. Love but, you, too. Uh, Josh Bennett, not you. The, the connection? Oh. Check out the connection, yep. But you winked at me. <laughs> well, was for something else. <laughs> You want to, if you want to see the connection between these two, you should go with them to a slaughterhouse. Uh, uh, no, I don't know what you're talking about, Brooks. <laughs> oh, my scary, scary We're moment. Not, not gonna, that was not fun, man. We had a little past. haunted house with the. We had a good group and we had a bad group. <laughs> 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 Which group were you in, Josh? <laughs> All right, back to the match. You're right. Okay. All right. Yeah. 15 to 11. <laughs> Everything down the middle so far, Landon taking a. Extra 13 second right there to put this one down the middle and in. And Gavin does the same thing over on the other side. We're going to call that a 12 on 12. Social. The yeah, crowd get go, really Can into you not it. say social? Social. <laughs> All 
our escape room is looking like it's not going to happen <laughs> further and further we get into this. What time was the uh, reservation for? Uh, I, if I know the girls, they haven't booked it yet. <laughs> Down the middle and in on bag. Are we doing one another one around tonight? 13? Or are you doing hey, another you one? Kenneth. Sorry, you're not going to invite that. me. I get it. You were invited. You were was I? I said Saturday. We need to get some food first, though. Too far off to the left, man. Justin Ling and Landon Crabtree have been hanging around, inching and inching and inching to the point where they're in command. Fisher Hamilton. <laughs> Keeps <laughs> looking over might at have, me. Might have, might have crossed. <laughs> we don't know. We'll never know. <laughs> I want him to look at me again. I'm going to give him a thumbs up because he keeps looking at me like really quickly. Okay, he did look over, but that time looking at the replay, or as we see the, the second delay on Facebook, he actually did keep his toe down. <laughs> he's fine. <laughs> he kept his toe down, so he's fine. Oh, We're going to get a timeout here. They're going to talk about it. Let's get it. Just try to see if we can kind of decipher what they're saying here. We need John Boy to read some lips. They're off camera. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd put it on him right now. Everybody hashtag John Boy. Two. Tag John Boy so we Man, can do it. Man, can you believe how good we're doing? I didn't think replay. we'd be doing this good. You're actually throwing really well. I know. Channel my inner Wally K9. No, seriously. Tag, so. tag John Boy. <laughs> John Boy Media. So you he can. need video, uh, Josh, to be able to lip read. Come, he's got video. They on. weren't on camera. That's what I said. Gosh. Why didn't you put them on camera? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> 15, 13. Oh, Matter of fact, you actually have the control of the cameras right there on that monitor. Uh, I'm not touching that monitor. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what's happening there. All right, got you, 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 done. Everything shuts down. Everything down the middle in here in round number 14. I mean, the pacing is definitely slowed down. Where's Where's Ryan Trader and Ryan Wiedenfeld when you need them? Yeah. <laughs> this match would have been over a half hour ago. There's a lot of money on the line for this game here. You want to know the payouts? I'm done. I'm done discussing payouts. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> 3,200 to first place, 1,800 second place here. Was this comp? <laughs> 15 13. Missed shot there on attempt number four. Look at that, a blocker. Let's go. Get some drama in this one. Back box. Ooh, nope. Rolls right over the top of it. I mean, it's crazy because, like, you don't really want to block Fisher. Right. That's what Fisher wants. But Fisher can also go hole for hole. So. Yeah. That one too far to the left. Fisher kind of nodding. He knows he missed it. He missed that release. Landon Lang. Landon. Dang it. Justin Lang up top off the back. This is a chance for Fisher to get three points, get them within striking distance to 18. Ooh, went for the uh, bar of soap attempt on that one. Pushes it behind the hole, but then it does drip back in. Eight on seven. I believe that's only one. 16, 13, if I'm not mistaken. Jordan, where'd you go out to dinner? Let me know. I'm hungry. We need to go after this game. Somewhere with some taste. Did we talk about that yet, yes, Wally? We that Dude, that Mexican place the girls have was pretty good. I'm just thinking if I eat that tomorrow, will not be a good day. <laughs> you know, Taco John's? No, it wasn't Taco John's. I don't know where it was. There's that. And Landon is doing a really good job of making sure he throws the bag when he's ready to throw the bag. Yeah. Right there during that moment, Gavin Connell kind of just took a second and looked over him like, come on, dude. Heat of the moment. He's Time. Still, like, eyeballing, eyeballing the bag. And this game. I'm not doing shot clock here unless I feel like it's out of control. Slick side it's... down, pushes into the pile, knocks in Gavin's bag. So now Gavin here with a situation where he might be able to get a couple out of it, depending on what Landon does with his final shot. And instead, he creates a lane. And we could be looking at 16-15 if he's able to get this push. Reverse spin. Oh. 
<laughs> pivot. Pivot. That was very close. <laughs> pivot. The angle, the angle I had, I couldn't 100% tell. Oh, that's a cop out. He definitely oh, stepped no. over the line. Yeah, I'm looking at the replay. Kick hey, him out of the not, league. Kick him out. He was not over the middle plane of the board, especially with that replay angle. Now, is that a different violation? Yeah, it's a touching of the bag violation. So I've been 37 points. So game over. What? Yep. Read the rules. It's on the website. Oh. I play cornhole.com. Creating a little bit of a wedge here. Let's see how Fisher wants to play this. That's what I thought. He wants to tap it. He's already got one in, so he's plus two in the round. That's sitting at 20. He doesn't like the shot, but he there it is. Both fall down. I think Fisher's in good position here. Should be an easy cut around with his skill set. Hops over. One of these bags has got to be in. Push it or shoot it either way. I want to, there he goes. I want a timeout. I want to use one graphic one more time. They're going to take a timeout as they look at this one. He takes a peek at the score. They're going to talk it out right here to figure out what they want to do. Is there a rule about having a towel on the board? Uh, no, only on the board that you're throwing at. Ah, okay. Either way, he's got his decision made right now, Chad. Bag is away. Has to hit the air oh. mill. Doesn't get it to go on the first try. <laughs> on the redirect, it does go. We call that a boomerang bag. Gets it to fall at the right time. Saves the game, at least for now. 20 to 13. It's Fisher like, Hamilton feels like he just got robbed. It's like that three-pointer <laughs> that just bounces on the rim a couple of times before finding, falling through. Oh, man. I can hear the resin pellets falling back towards the hole to get that one to stay alive. 20 to 13, Gavin's first shot is down the middle and in. Oh, man, I'm not going to lie. I forgot to do the replay on that. I forgot I had a replay. Oh, I'm tripping, goodness. bro. That was such a great shot. <laughs> it Maybe really was a good moment. Replay. Good call out on my bed, though. I'll have it on my show, Bagging and Bragging. On YouTube at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Make sure you tune in. Are we going to get more uh, chaos with K9? And K <laughs> That's a bait. Did he just give him the thumbs up for the airmail? Sitting at 20 right now. Wow. I'm going bored here. I'm playing chicken. I don't want this shot. If he's shooting this airman with a chance to lose the game. Did it get real quiet in here? It got really, really <laughs> quiet. He is shooting the airman. Oh! He's going to stick on the red zone. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> is going to fall. Oh, what? my goodness. Oh How close my. can you get to taking that airmail to an extreme level? And we're going to continue to play some more as <laughs> Landon Crabtree is in disbelief. <laughs> Let's take a look at this one more again. Up top hits the red zone. Sticks on the backside. Nothing's going to fall. He catch those feet in that uh, replay. Wow. Airmail's down the street. I'm just surprised that Landon even shot the airmail right there. Justin's got one bag on the back of the hole. That one is pretty much out of play. Fisher Hamilton's looking at a 12-pack for the win. Laying off to the right. Doesn't even need 12. Nine could do it. Keep it under control. Keep it under control. Control. Very important bag right now. Can you imagine stepping over the center line right now in this position? <laughs> Nine pack with the bully. Ling has to shoot. The airmail wow. gets a clip. Nothing falls in for the win, and that will do it. Fisher Hamilton and Gavin Cano take it down here in Des Moines, Iowa. Open number two did not disappoint. Chat, hope you guys have been informed. Hope you guys have had a good time. I'm going to do my best to figure out how to do these replays on the way out. Enjoy the content, chat. I will see you guys tomorrow for singles action. Open number two. Here you go.